And, and I would think, brothers and sisters out there, that, you know, that, that we, um, if you're listening to me, because you have to understand my, my whole purpose in life um, is, hey, I had a life just like everybody else. Um, and then once I met the Messiah, that life was, it was over. Um, because I had a different calling to my life after he gave me a vision and a dream. Um, and then it took a little while to bring it to, uh, you know, to materialize. But here I am today. Uh, I'm here. I'm a servant. I'm a servant of the Most High Yah. And, um, and, and I'm here to serve you, his people. Um, and I take that very, very seriously. And I'm sure that many of you who uh, have experienced offense when you first met me, um, and, and then after you um, got past your flesh, you done your due diligence, you went back and you uh, become proactive and you actually studied, uh, you come to find out that um, as offenses, offensive as I may have been or how I presented myself, uh, from the very beginning, you found out that actually uh, my heart is actually big as Texas or big, big as the United States of America, um, that I really truly had an intent and I had a purpose uh, for all this hollering and screaming just uh, to wake you up, each and every last one of you, uh, because I really, truly, and you can sense the love. You can feel the love uh, when I meet you. You can tell that I really, truly love each and every last one of you. I like you experience uh, the letdown of being deceived and being lied to. Um, and I've been on this journey for 20-something years, and, um, and I'm still growing. I'm still growing. My job is to help save you a bunch of steps, a bunch of unnecessary steps that otherwise um, you would have um, taken if you could make it through the daunting task of dealing with the religion of Christianity. Because that in itself, um, I mean, if you can come out of that and still have faith, um, you, you've done something. But most of you, the majority of you sitting in this room tonight, the way you come across me, is, is that you you um, you you actually hit your knees and you prayed and you asked the Most High uh, to show you His people, show you a man of Yah, show you His way, show you who it is, and that's how you got to me. That's how you got to me because He heard the cry of your heart. Um, it's the, you know that's the same pattern that we read again and again in the Barit Kadashah. So Mishpachak, my family, uh, Shalom, 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 on this Shabbat evening right here. And so I say Shabbat, 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 Shalom, 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 hallelujah to each and every last one of you here this evening. Um, and I do bless each and every last one of you. Uh, I truly, truly do uh, with the highest blessings and highest praise uh, that can be bestowed upon our lips, um, which is, you know, the two main purposes while we're here in this life, while we are created. Number one, don't ever lose thought of this. If you're listening to me, and I know that, that people say, well, Pastor Dow, you sure have some unorthodox ways. Why you do stuff like that? Because I want to stimulate thought, brothers and sisters. If you are listening to me, you can hear me right now. Type in the word listen, listen, um, before I, I go on uh, with my thought right here. Okay? Type in the word listen. Um, and, 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 you know, you, you have to understand, uh, brothers and sisters, that, you know, we, we've got two purposes and two reasons why we're, well, we got one purpose, why we was created here. And and everything else is just basically, um, uh, I, I don't know, I, I guess they could enhance our growth. Um, um, and, and they could bring us closer uh, to the Father some form, some way. Uh, but I'm going to deal with a particular subject here for a second, try to give you understanding uh, because, you know, I, I get people all the time asking me uh, pretty much this question again and again and again. And I understand the reason why they ask me this question, too, because it's based upon who you've been listening to. And that's just true. Um, everybody don't have the spirit of truth like they claim to. But, you know, we've been we were created to worship and to be obedient. Did y'all hear those two words? When you look. From better sheet to the apocalypse. When you read from better sheet all the way to the book of Revelations, Genesis to Revelation, the sentiment is still the same with those of us who are Israelites from the very beginning. We are created to worship the one true Elohim and to obey 
his laws, statutes, and commandments. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit, and um, I, I really do not intend. Um, I haven't had too much time to, to do any. Matter of fact, I, I hardly ever make any. Matter of fact, I usually make no show preparation whatsoever at all. I usually just come in here and sit down and then just roll. Um, you, know, we, you know, we had the storms pending and stuff, and early this morning we woke up, we had nickel-sized hail uh, raining outside all over the place, um, hoping that it doesn't do any hail damage to our vehicles. Um, and, and, and then we had, uh, you know, pretty decent weather today, and then all this rain this evening. Um, but I, it's not my intent... Uh, to speak over your heads. Um, and, and and think about this for a moment. With some of the things that I say, some of the things that you may hear uh, Elder Doug or Brother Shane uh, bring forth and what they say on here, um, don't think that we're uninformed um, about certain perspectives or certain ways. Uh, and, and don't think that we don't know uh, because you don't see us running along um, with the in crowd. Um, you know, a lot of times um, we usually just wait till the opportunity presents itself, um, you know, before we actually bring out a lot of stuff. Because, you know, you're, you're going to see here in just a moment, um, you know, why it may be good to know history and stuff. But, you know, if you don't have a grasp and command of the word, it's going to be hard for you to understand uh, where we're coming from. Uh, when we speak from a historical viewpoint, um, as, as well as um, uh, a, a true view, viewpoint that you may not be uh, familiar with. I, I get people all the time, you know, asking me over and over and over and over and over again, um, you know, Pastor Dow, why is it that, you know, you, you still use the name Jesus? Well, I use the name Jesus because Jesus is the English name and it's the language that we speak. And regardless of uh, the, the different dissentings that people may have or the di different schools of thoughts that you may have out there today, and I did use a key word there. Listen, school of thought. And if you notice, if you've been listening to me any particular time at all, I've been trying my best. Uh, and that's why I ask you to listen attentively. Listen very closely. And listen to every word that I'm saying. Uh, because you know, as Americans, um, when we get something in our head, we don't like learning. We don't like change. We, we don't like getting out of our comfort zone. Um, I actually find a lot of pleasure when I can get the time to do it. In study, I was just um, uh, sitting on the couch in here with Sister Carol, and uh, we were sitting there talking. And, um, and you know, she kind of looks at me with that puzzled look, what's on your mind? And I said, well, I said, you know, I, you know, life has a way of just playing out in time. And I said, I think the biggest thing on my heart and my mind is, is that all these thoughts and all this teaching um, that I give to the saints and stuff, I've got to, I must get this down on paper. I must so that people don't have to spend the time of uh, the painstaking time that I have uh, to get to these truths. Uh, because, you know, hey, you know, people would love, um, I mean, just love to, to, to just throw that aside. She says, yeah, honey, I know, but man, with all the stuff you got to do, how in the world are you going to do that? And I said, I I don't know. I said, I don't know. I said, I know the most I make a way, but, you know, the bottom line is there's no, there's nothing more important than the truth and the people getting the truth right. And that's the reason why the ministry is called the straight way. And it's spelled a particular way, too. Um, I, like you, have experienced the pain of being hurt uh, by religion. Believe me, I have. And I understand your pain. Um and that's the reason why that we spend our time. We, we set apart out here straight away. We, we are definitely set apart. Uh, we live by example. We set apart. And we're set apart for use. And, and every single year, we have grown uh, more and more and more in grace and in knowledge. Um, and, and I don't think there's ever going to be a time where we're going to stop. But I will tell you this, that it's taken us quite a long time to unlearn a lot of things that we have ever learned. And so when by the time you get to me, um, you're on a crash course of truth. Um, and the reason why that I'm so adamant about you checking me out, check me out, check me out, check me out, check me out. Because my intent from the get go is to make you angry and to get you really mad. If I get you mad and I get you angry and upset, now I got your attention. 
And if I keep on challenging that ego that you got, you know what you're going to do? Well, well, I'm going to find out real quick and see if he's right, all right, or not. And, stuff. and then all of a sudden, you're going to, uh, uh, then we're going to find out if you are really, truly a saint of the most high, if you belong to the king, because, you know, before honor, there's humility. And pride go before destruction and the Holy Spirit before fall. And so when you go in and you read and you get that first train wreck, it's like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Then you go, how, 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 okay, okay. And then you go on to the next one. Oh, uh, oh boy. And then it ain't before long, you hit your knees and you thank the Father for actually guiding you to the truth. I thank you. I thank the Father for that. I'm a real true pastor. I'm called by Yahweh Elohim himself. Uh, I know that it's hard to believe. Can you imagine? Have anybody in here ever read the account of Jeremiah? Have you ever read the account of Jeremiah or some of the things that the prophets had to go through? Remember, they were dealing with Israel, his people. Can, can you Do you understand that? These were regular, everyday men, just like the people. Just like the people. Um, except one thing about it, though. The people actually knew if they were called of Yah or not. That's right, because their truth, their prophecies, it came to pass. And they had very unorthodox ways. Can you imagine if Jesus came on the scene today? You know, our federal government would lock him up and throw him in jail. They would, they would actually put the T word on him. They would call him a terrorist. All the Christian churches, they would call him the Antichrist, the Anti-Messiah, or Satan incarnate. You know the reason why? Because Christ... The one thing that he always did, he came to teach the law. <laughs> and Christianity don't teach the law. As a matter of fact, they're so busy telling you it's done away with that if the real true Messiah came today, they would lock him up, throw him out of the churches and call him the devil himself. Is that not the same attitude that the scribes and Pharisees had way back then? Did they not call the king Beelzebub, did they not do that? Sure they did. The religious people of that hour, and they, they did. And what did Christ say over and over again? It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. So, you know, Pastor Dowd, I'm not too much um, worried about um, all, all these academic, strategic ways uh, that people come up with. I do do research and I do study. Uh, but more than anything, I think the most important ingredient to have is the Ruah HaKadosh, which is the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. And if you have his Ruah HaKadosh, you will know exactly who I am. And I also will know exactly who you are. You know why? Because we all have the same Abba. We all have the same Father. And we're not to know any man after the flesh, but by the Spirit. And this is how we make the connection through the Holy Spirit, because we are true worshipers, because the true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Um, so with all that, I'm going to go here just for a few moments into certain things that we're not familiar with. Um, and I'm going to make it I'm going to make it quick and simple because I'm going to go directly to the phone lines and take your phone calls, because I'm sure that many of you have many, many questions to ask me. Uh, uh, on, on this night right here. Hallelujah. Um, and so, you know, I hope that we can do whatever we can to save you a lot of steps. And I do mean save you a lot of steps. Now, uh, a, a man of Yah is not going to speak according to conventional wisdom. No, no, we're not. We're going to speak what the Most High says, what the Prophet says. Um, and and, and y'all have to understand that. Um, I have a generation coming behind me and, and you know what my desire is? My desire is, is that you, the generation that's coming after me, if you are, are, are like 30 and younger and you're coming, you're, you're like 15, 20 years behind me. Um, and I'm just using this as, as just a, a note. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't, it, the age is not important. But if you're 30 and younger, you know, we need to have strong men of Yah who have a command for the word. 
You need to be able to speak words of truth that your enemies and those people out there in the world would not be able to resist the wisdom that comes from your mouth. Sure, would they try to character assassinate you? You better believe it's just part of the walk. But they would never be able to attack the truth that you say. Oh, they may not like it, but the truth is they, they, they can't attack the truth that you stand for. You know why? Because the truth stands all by itself. So, I mean, I, I'm a little bit different than a lot of the uh, so-called Torah Hebrew teachers today. And I'll give you one of the differences. One, for instance, I believe in being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And how I know that I'm filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is I have something that, that we call the evidence. The evidence is, is I speak with unknown tongues as the spirit of Yah gives the others. Now, you get people today that they will arrest this book left and right, slam it, and they will come up with all types of sayings to deceive your hearts and mind to make you think you don't have to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And of course, then I would say, no wonder you don't have any power to heal anybody, to lay hands on the sick and they recover. No wonder you can't do the works of the Father. Huh. And so, but you'll read throughout all the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit, is he still available today? Is he still alive? Is he still where? Well? Is he still here? Yes or no? Well, the question is an well, the answer to the question is an emphatic yes. Yes, he is still here. And and so I preach it, I teach it, I do it. Um, so we speak in tongues as the Spirit of Yah gives the utterance. And now that we even know the proper time when to speak, when not to speak, when we do it, when you shouldn't do it. We, we, believe it or not, we actually, and even believe it or not, here at Straightway, we actually experience many of the gifts of the Spirit. Um, but, but you know, we, I ain't never came across this Spirit. Um, well, yo, let, 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 let me see. Let me come over here and prophesy to you your destiny. Uh, one day you're going to be a millionaire and, and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. I ain't never heard that in the spirit. As a matter of fact, uh, anytime we have had tongues and interpretations of tongues and usually when we're hearing straight from glory, I'll give you a scenario how it happens. Uh, we'll be in church and the spirit is just right, conducive for the most high. He, he He's being ushered in as a king. He, he's being ushered in and, and, and he... He, he decides he's just going to speak to his people. So you know what he'll do? He'll take one of the people out there in the audience and he will speak. He will start speaking through them in tongues. And then he may use that person or another person. And you know what literally happened is the, they would translate what that person is saying in tongues to the people in English. I'm in the pulpit. Now, mind you, the Most High Yah is not going to go past his word. I can choose to let that prophecy go forward or I can make that person sit down and shut up. Yes, I can too. And we don't have an out of order tongue talking business here either, if I can use that term. Um, not at all. We don't have no, it's not out of order at all. When I can sense that the spirit of the Most High Yah is getting ready to speak to us, you know what I'll do? And the, a lot of the new people have no idea what's going on. And I'll be in the pulpit. I'll sit down. You know what I do? I'll casually step aside out of the pulpit or I will step back from the pulpit and I will have a seat. Usually I step outside of the pulpit because, you know, it's his people. He's talking to all of us and he has the floor. And whenever the Most High Yah has directly spoken to us here straightway, every bit of it has come to pass. But you know what? It ain't these kind words that all these people out here hear when they proper line and proper sign. We're usually getting hammered. And usually there's somebody or there may be a group of people who are lacking or sinning somewhere. And he's really just bringing them out to the forefront. I mean, he actually, one of the prophecies that we had here, if I can vaguely remember one of the words was, is, I will kill you. <laughs> can you believe that? And then we had another prophecy uh, where he said, and this was last year, he says, I am going to bring my people. As a matter of fact, I got somebody here that remembers this very well. I don't know how long it'll take for Sister Ashley to come down here 
I want Sister Ashley to come down here. And I want Sister Ashley, uh, because she has a vivid memory, because, you know, Sister Ashley has never saw anything like this before. And Sister Ashley was quaking and shaking the entire service with the fear of Yah. I mean, she had total fear of the most high on her. And, and, and she's never saw that before. She never understood it. She, you know, there's a lot of things that it would take you time to experience with us here at Straightway. Um, simply because when you visit, it may not take place at that particular time, but it may the next one. Um, and when Sister Ashley had this experience, um, it did her in. I mean, it did her in. And if there's a sister on this land that is really serious about serving the Most High, Sister Ashley is. Um, but she has never forgotten that prophecy. And if I, my memory serves me correct, this is what the Most High said. He says, yo, you, my people, I want you to prepare your hearts. Listen to this, all you people that is in this room. Because I am ready to send my people to you. Did y'all hear that? And over the past year, look how many people have come to us. Look what the Most High has done. Um, but so I don't get the, the account wrong, I'll let Sister Ashley explain it to you and let her um, uh, re, you know what I mean, I'll let her retake her account of the situation um, because, you know, so so do you want to think Pastor Dow pulling your leg or nothing. But um, Pastor Dow, I actually teach people. How to, um, you know, if, if you know, if um, I don't know when the most high, how he's going to do it at any particular time. We just believe by faith. I saw short legs, short arms grow out. I've, I've actually um, cast spirits out of people and I teach people here how to do it. We have deliverance workshops where I teach you how to get free of all the things that the world says there's no cure for, there's no deliverance for. And the only thing you can do is mask your diseases and symptoms by going to the pharmaceutical company and taking drugs. I mean, that's what they say. That's what they flat out say. And I, and I said, because I said over and over again, if your pastor, your preacher and teacher, if he's not casting out devils, do you think he's going to actually do a ministry on it? Do you actually think he's going to tell you? Because the way I see that the gospel is all about it, it's basically broke down into three parts. Number one, salvation. And number two, healing and number three deliverance i mean we go read the prophecies and you know i mean it's something <clears throat> excuse me hallelujah but um so there's a lot of things and there's a lot of experiences um, that myself, Brother Shane is a teacher. Um, uh, Brother Shane, ever since we started the Straightway Truth, he's been with me along with my parents from day one. It was just my family, my parents, and Brother Shane. That's it. And then from there, the Most High has added faithful Israelites. And we've been faithful. And uh, remind you, we were living in the cities, and, and he gave us the understanding to separate, set ourselves apart. And I would say, if I say it once, I'll say it a thousand times, that if we did not set ourselves apart, I, Pastor Dow would not know what he knows today. So when y'all see me go on one of my tyrants, as people like calling it, and when I'm challenging all of these scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites and, and all these people who seem to be of some what, when I do that, I do it for a reason. I really truly do. Um, you know, because... A lot of people sit back and trade words and argue all day long, but I, I'm a person that like doing. I, I'm the person that's like, oh, oh, oh we can sit and, and, and trade words all day long, but when are we going to make this thing happen to where we can do like the scribe and Pharisees did in Christ's day, where we can sit across from each other, have a civil dialogue, and then have some people invited to hear? Uh, that don't happen too much today, do it? Don't happen too much at all. Hmm. Well, um... But um, uh, well, I don't know what. What do you say? But yeah, hey, I have people um, still mailing me today, Pastor Dow. Why do you use the name Jesus? Well, it's because I understand the etymology of words. 
uh, I'm sure I could feel this room right here. Well, with all kind of people who all pronounce what they believe to be his so-called name. Did y'all hear what I said? His so-called name. Uh, and they would all disagree with each other. And it would leave you, the people in the state of confusion. Yeah, it would. I mean, I mean, let's just think about this. Let me just go off the top of my head for a second. Let me see. Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahushua, Yahshua, Yisha, um, Ahia, Yahweh. Um, I mean, we can go on and on and on and on and on and fill up this whole room about all the people who disagree. It's remarkable, isn't it? And what does that do? That brings a state of confusion on the people. So, you know, the one thing about it, you know, the one thing that let the rubber meet the road, though? Elijah, 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 you know what he did? There was false prophets of Baal. Um, and Israel was holding between two opinions. And Elijah said, I'll tell you what, you call on your Elohim, I'll call on mine. And the one that answers by fire, we let him be Yah. Hmm? And so Pastor Dow says, man, that sounds like a pretty good thing. Uh, I don't think I have the faith to call fire down from heaven, but who knows? But I do know this. I said, I'll tell you what. Let's get a sick person or somebody up here sitting in front of both of us. You call on the name who you believe in. I call on the name I believe in. And one who answered, let's let him be Elohim. How about that? <laughs> Woo, it makes sense to me. Huh? I'm willing to test that boast. Well, we ain't got too many that are going to test that boast because sitting down on Sabbath and getting filled up full of knowledge and then go out on the street corner and then don't have power to heal a gnat of a toothache, that ain't the ministry of Christ. It's not. To sit up and have demons come up to you and mock you and say you ain't got no power, that's not the ministry of Christ. I promise you, that is not the ministry of the Messiah. No, it ain't. Um, I, There's just no way possible. And some of the things I see on here is just unbelievable. Um, uh, I don't know. I guess I could go on all day about that. But, um, you know, more recent is that a lot of people don't understand uh, the origins of um, of the name Jesus. Um, all the translations of scriptures that we have available to us that actually got, that came over to what we call the English language actually come from the Germans. And the J was interchangeable with the Y. As a matter of fact, the J was actually pronounced just like the Y. It wasn't until, you know, we, we become the, over into this English culture and stuff and we start putting our slang to it um, that it actually, hey, it's still the same name. It's still the same name, but it's unchanged based on culture because, you know, you had pronunciations of names that people just could not pronounce, if you understand what I mean. Uh, Dracula's Night Out, brother. Saying, I want you to pay attention. You need to boot that guy called Dracula's Night Out, brother. You shouldn't let him roll like that. Uh, you need to stay on top of that, brother. Uh, hallelujah. But, you know, we heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and we cast out devils, demons, demons, um, and we wrestle against spirits of darkness, angels, fallen uh, spirits, disembodied spirits, Nephilims, whatever you want to call them. We, we have success uh, of doing it all the time. Hallelujah. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> the next question was, is, Pastor Dow, why come you don't never say Yahweh? I mean, why come you don't say Yahweh? And I'll go, oh boy. <clears throat> the first thing I do is ask, well, have you ever done any, have you, do you know the, what happened, the reason why or how the name Yahweh uh, came into being? Um, I mean, do you? Um, I mean, just because people put scholarly evidence and, and everybody just get together and put mental sin and agree, do you understand? Um, and I said, by the way, in the Hebrew, how would you spell it? And they would say, well, Y A H W E H. And I said, really? I said, now answer me a question. How in the world can you spell his name Yahweh when there were no vowels in the Hebraic language? And you don't have far to look. You could go in Wikipedia and see a long, long time ago, there's no vowels in the Hebraic language. As a matter of fact, the vowels were added by a group of people who functioned by two school of thoughts.
Oh boy. Yeah, I have lost a lot of weight, but, but by two school of thoughts. Um, as a matter of fact, I think Ashley just come in. Y'all, y'all mind me that I'm dealing with two school of thoughts here. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, Hey, um, move that, um, pad over there. Uh, that, that, that chair thing over there and take it, um, back off over there. I'm going to get Ashley to, Sister Ashley is going to come in and give a, uh, a, a testimony of her experience of what you will read about in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, the, all the gifts of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is Sister Ashley. Okay, Sister Ashley, earlier I was speaking about and I was talking um, uh, about the experience that you had, um, a tongues interpretation, of tongues, actually the, what the Most High said. And I think more than anything, uh, what I'm trying to convey to the people, what I'm trying to get over to them is, is um, um, I, can't remember, I can't remember everything that the Most High says. Uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to let Ashley go ahead and talk about um, um Please fill me in on what you want to hear. Oh, yeah, missing. you missed it. What we were talking about earlier, Ashley, we was talking about, uh, I was talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And I was talking about how that when you you got here um, and, and you were here, and one of your first experiences was is that uh, you, you never um, have seen the gifts of the Spirit or the power of y'all operating in the assembly to where when you read the Bible, you see that interpret, someone speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues and the different dialect of tongue and how you can tell that as actually Yah himself actually speaking to us, his people through a vessel. Absolutely. And, uh, and, I, and I told the people out there that it was a very fearful experience for you um, because, because, you never, um, because you never have experienced anything like that before. Right. And so um, I was telling him about the prophecy of last year, and I try to remember some of it um, in, in part. If you understand what I mean, I try to remember some of it in part and I couldn't remember it all. Um, so what, what, what I did was I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to call Sister Ashley down here and I'm going to get her uh, to explain uh, exactly, you know, what took place or what the most high had actually said to us. Um, and then I bought, a, I bought it up to the point. So, OK, now we can see now you can see why you people are here because of what the prophecy was all about. So go ahead and, and explain, Sister Ashley. Um, what what you heard, All right. experienced. All right. Hello, saints. Greetings. We love you from straightway. I want to give honor and glory to our Father and Most High for even speaking to us and finding time for us to come down and dwell amongst his people and give us his voice. It was the most powerful thing I've ever experienced. I was not familiar with um, even the term gifts of the Spirit, so uh, it's totally foreign to me. Uh, so I guess I'm a good one to talk about it. But um, I remember exactly what he said, and just as in Acts, it talks about the Russian mighty wind. We didn't feel the wind, but the presence of a, of a might comes before you, and every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and, and there is no, um, no argument with that. But he did call us my people. That was the first thing that we heard, which glory to him, we are his people. He said to, um, now is not the time for selfishness and to put it away from you. He said, the time is here. He said, the time is wrapping up. He said, I am gathering you together. He said, stay in the ark. And um, I have witnessed not only just that interpretation, but three, since I have been here, he calls us my people. That's and how, long, how long have you been here? I have only been here four years. Pastor. Four years. And so this is not something that happens all the no. time then. Because, no. you know, you, you, you go to churches, uh, you go to churches out there in the world, boy, that they, they got prophecy going for 20 times in a service and stuff. So this is what, three times in four years? In four oh, years. Okay. And all right, go ahead. Sister. We truly never know when he's going to speak. It's not a, uh, we don't, um, he just, it, the presence is so powerful, it's so mighty, it falls upon us. You can feel it come upon us. 
Um, the, the first time I didn't know what it was, I knew it was his presence. You could feel the press coming in the room. That's about all like... I knew. Yeah, <laughs> that's about all I knew. And you fear so much because he is your creator and he is your king. And where's the camera here? Mm -hmm. um, you fear so much um, that it overwhelms you and literally um, knocks you to your knees, to your face. Um, he is speaking to you no matter who else is in the room. Mm -hmm. He's speaking directly to you. He has told us through interpretation um, to listen to the faithful and listen to the righteous one, which, as you all know, is pastor. So he has even spoken about pastor to us. And it, um, he has also said, I see the blackness of your hearts. Um, he has told us uh, twice out of the three times he's spoken um, put selfishness away from you, reminding us that we are selfish. Um, so it's an honor to hear his voice. It's always a fearful thing, and it's something to reflect upon throughout the entire year so that um, um, basically he's always ever before your eyes and mind, that he can come down before you at any time when he chooses. So is that kind of what you so want to do? So he is alive, him? isn't he? He is alive and well in me and in, in the saints here. What do I usually do? Um, whenever I can sense that the Holy Spirit is, is getting ready to, to speak to us. Pastor will step aside. If he's behind the pulpit, he will go sit down immediately. And that's one way that uh, I have begun to know that the Most High will speak to us is Pastor will first initially get that unction in his spirit. So I wanted you people to, to hear that, and I want you people to understand it because... Um, <laughs> You know, as small as we are, as far as the remnant, we are his people. And, and we are a very few people up on the face of this planet Earth. It's not many. I want you people to get it through your head that Noah preached 120 years and only eight souls were saved. Um, there was, I mean, uh, over a million Israelites that came out of the land of Mizraim or Egypt. Um, and, and, and every one of those pe persons that came out, um, that was 18 years and older, they all died. Every single one of them in the wilderness and didn't go into the land of Canaan. Just Joshua and Caleb and his generation. And and we go throughout the books and see where the people were taken into captivity on a few people returned to come back to the rebuilding or the restoring of the temple. Um, Jesus tells us over and over and over again that there's only going to be a few that's going to be saved. He tells us we need to strive to enter in. And then we get to the point where there's like 6.5 billion people, close to 7 billion people on the face of planet Earth. And we get to the book of Revelations, and it insinuates that only 144,000 is going to be left alive. I mean, at least he did increase from eight. But that's not many. 144,000 is like a drop in the bucket. And because when you read the book of Revelation, it says the ones that are going to be there are the ones who keep his commandments and have the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And then it gives us a blueprint. That's what that. That's what the Torah is. The the word Torah means instructions. That's what that that book is. It, it is an instruction book for us on this side of glory, heading to the kingdom or eternal life. It's in our heart. We say it all the time. The King is coming. So we're looking for the kingdom, just like the apostles did when the, when they was with the Messiah after his death, burial, and resurrection. When they would be in. When he would, hey, they all saw him 40 days by many infallible proofs and stuff. And one of the questions they asked him before he ascended up, and he, had, and he went up into a cloud. He says, Yahshua, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That was in their heart. What are we looking for? What do we talk about? We always talk about the new Jerusalem coming down out of Shemayim. We're always talking about that over and over again. That is just in our heart. And we know that the restoration of all things is at hand. We can, we can sense it. We can feel it. We know that it is here. We are right at the door. Even if we suppose to allegedly live another 20 or 30 years, it's still at the door. We are nearer today than when we first believed. And so we don't have time to waste time and to play games on this and stuff. So, uh, hey, Yah's people are here. And like I said before, you listen to me. You are Yah's people. Um, that was one of the things he stressed, though, wasn't it? Absolutely. My people, did he did he mention something about that he was going to bring his people? Yes, I would like to say his exact words, if I recall correctly, Father, um, and his order was, 
It is time. Mm -hmm. I'm gathering you together. Time is wrapping up. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, YouTube took off like mm -hmm. nobody's business. Our phone has been ringing like nobody's business. We have every guest home on the land field, almost every Sabbat, um, basically because he was letting us know that this is what I'm doing and it's all in his hands. I'm gathering you together. And before that moment, he wasn't doing it in such a, a speed as we see now. So it's an honor. He gave us that heads up in prophecy and literally after that very day, it began to take place. So, And of course, you know us, you know, he has to first prepare our hearts and get our hearts and our minds ready. And I would tell you, even as, as a pastor and stuff, I'm not too pleased um, with with where we at as a community. I am not. I'm just not pleased. I'm not pleased with some of the brothering that we have on this community. Um, uh, and that's just the truth. Um, and and I wish they would come up. If they don't, I know the, the most high going to cut them off. And that's all there's to it because that's none of my business. Um, because there's a lot of things that happen with a few people that is not the spirit of this community. Um, and then, you know, I'm pretty quick. Well, I'm pretty slow. I'm slow to rap, slow to anger. Um, but there will be some changes. Um, either, either the spirit of the men are going to change or we're going to send them to the spirit of the world. And that's a promise. And that's the truth. Um, because we, we're, we're serious about our father's business and, and, uh, cause it only takes one sinner to destroy much good. And that's it. Only one. Um, and I hope that you people out there is just as serious uh, as we are. And I hope that you're just as serious as we are about the Most High Yah. So, you know, you've got a short period of time to learn what we know. And we're willing to give it out to you so that you can be um, uh, making advances. I, Sister Marjorie, uh, she's got a, a father, I think her father may be 87 years old, and she called me. And, and you know, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it when people call in. And they're heavy in spirit. I really, truly feel it. it. I mean, I feel it big time. I feel it. And and it weighs on me real heavy when, you know, my dad's sick. What do I do? My dad's sick. What do I do? And and so I told Sister Marjorie exactly what to do. 87 years old now. We heard a testimony from Sister Bonnie. What happened with her father? That's his power working through his people. I told Sister Marjorie what to do. She called and left a message. She said, Father, for the first time in 12 years, my father is without any pain. Because she's sitting there watching her father daily, and she's hurting. She don't want to see this man like this and stuff. She did what I told her to, and her father's not in pain any longer. That's a big deal for them out there. Very big deal. Very, very big deal. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we are the, the despised and the rejected, the scouring of the earth. Every single one of us lived out in the world. All of us were part of the religion of Christianity at one time. But since then, we have obeyed the book. We've come out. We've been separate. And now we're servants of the Most High Yah. And we're going to continue to keep growing. And I hope that y'all ready uh, for the uh, the feast days messages that's coming up here. Because you're going to have to really pay attention. So hinge on my words and pay attention to the words that come out of my mouth. Don't sit there mind-numbed. Let your mind go wandering off in the way blue yonder, way wild blue yonder somewhere and stuff. You need to pay attention to what I'm saying. You really, truly do. Well, with that said, Sister Ashley, thank you for coming. Absolutely. Now you're becoming sorry that the transmitter wasn't on, but Saints of the Most High will um, cut that thing on and we'll replay the broadcast so that y'all won't miss um, all the first part. All the Saints here. Uh, we had different electronics off, and so we didn't cut everything else on, so they didn't get the first 35 minutes of the broadcast. Um, they, they had, as a matter of fact, Sister Carol had to call Ashley by our little radios around here in order to get her. So, hey, we, we thank the Father for that or somebody did. But anyway, thank you for coming, Absolutely. Sister Ashley. Hallelujah. Yes, Bless you. Bless you. Shabbat Bless shalom. You, uh, so we hope that that encouraged your hearts uh, some way, somehow. Um Hallelujah. Uh, let me see. What was I talking about? Um, oh, the Mazarus. The Mazarus has two school of thoughts. Uh, one of them is the Babylonian uh, a thought, and the other one is the Palestinian thought. Uh, the Mazarites are the ones <clears throat> who follow the, pretty much the same sentiments as those who are the authors of the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, the, you know, the, we, we got this made-up sentiment coming through rabbinical Judaism. Um, that's the reason why Pastor Dow don't hold fast to rabbinical Judaism 
uh, because all these people that are in that country over there that you call Israel and that you're deceived in thinking that they're the people of this book right here, um, and they're not. They're not the people of this book. And we, you know what? We're going to find out one day. We're going to find out and see if Pastor Dow was a nutcase and lost his mind if I was right on point. We're going to find out that for sure. And ain't nobody going to miss that boast. Um, but these people are a bunch of Talmudists, and that's what they are. Uh, does that mean that I totally reject everything in the Talmud? Well, I don't know what to reject about the Talmud because I, I don't read the thing. It's just all there is to it. And I could care less about it, too, to tell you the truth. Um, but I am familiar with what the Ruah HaKadosh is doing within us right now, and I guarantee you can't none of them witches over there produce the power that the Most High Yah is allowing us to produce by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's just the truth. Um, so we are Yah's people, no doubt about it. We are Yah's holy people, and that's just the truth. Um, but the Masoretes, they are the ones who wanted to so-called, quote-unquote, preserve the name to make sure uh, that, that the name wasn't uh, being abused or misused or, or or where people could take his name in vain. And so they, they went ahead and add vowels pointing and stuff when we all know that there's no such thing as vowels in the Hebraic. That's why I keep telling you over and over again, there's no way his name could be Yahweh. There's no way his name could be Yahushua. There's no way his name could be Yahuwah. It can't be anything that has vowels in it at all. And they say, well, they use that for pronunciation. Well, hey, they, hey, the Masoretes is also the ones who introduced the name Adonai and Hashem in order to be able to uh, preserve what they call um, protecting the name of Yahweh. They, uh, that, that's, that's just proof text from history. Um, see, I know that many of you don't have any idea who in the world is the Masoretes. Well, that's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved. And you're not going to study from an English perspective and understand a Hebraic book, its culture, its heritage, the nationality of the people, the language of the people. You can't do that from a uh, an evil, wicked, satanic English thought pattern of a mind. You can't do it. It's impossible. That's why we're charged to study to show ourselves approved unto Yah, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Do we understand that? Um, and so then later on, the reason why the King James Version, 1611 edition, came one of the most accepted versions of the Bible is because they followed pretty much the same sentiments as the Masoretes did. You know, they wanted to uh, preserve the name, preserve the, what they call the name. So they added in Lord and God and Lord and God and, and and you have no idea what Lord means whatsoever at all. None. And so you just assume because you speak English as ignorant as we are that you, you call it on because we put mental sin. You know how many times you hear Pastor Doc keep talking about mental sin? You know, the most high he gives us the grace and the mercy to grow to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. He does. But once we come to the knowledge of truth about something, you know, we got to throw away the lies. We got to throw away all the stuff and we got to keep on growing. And I promise you, you know, a lot of times you, you don't believe, believe it or not. I'm moving at a pace right now where I got my foot on the pedal and I got another foot on the brake because I don't want to leave everybody behind. If I had it my way, I put my foot on the gas and off we go. And then everybody who can hang on, we, we going to get down. But then I wouldn't be what you call a good shepherd then, would I? If I leave off all these straggling sheep who wander around, uh, want to go off in the green passes of a wolf come and says, hey, come over here and listen to you. Go over there and listen and get tanked up on a bunch of junk and garbage and stuff. Can't make ends meet, might make understanding of it. I mean, oh, mercy. So I have to actually, you know, go like, whoa, 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 whoa. I have to hold myself at times. I mean, look at the teaching that we've been doing here lately on spiritual warfare and how it's able to open up your mind of understanding so you can be able to clearly see the war that is going on in you first, in your home, in your personal life, and with others. Is it not remarkable and amazing how that through discernment, which is the eyes of the spirit that you are able to understand these words when I speak them. 
Huh? Is that not remarkable and amazing? Through discernment, through the eyes of the Spirit, but words have to be spoken. That's why I need for y'all to pray for me. I mean, I truly, truly need prayer. I need prayer from the saints of the Most High Yah. Um, hey, I, I can tell you right now, we here straightway, when we first woke up this morning, and we turn on the weather forecast. And of course, you know the tornado is heading right to Macon County, right, right here towards us. First thing we start doing, rebuking, praying, turn it away. Rebuking, praying, turn it away. And we did that all day long. And throughout our getting ready for the Shabbat, we did that all day long. Rebuking, praying, rebuking, praying. And, and we only got just a remnant of rain. And then I made the video, and then most of you saints joined in with us. And the most high blessed us. We turned the devil away. <laughs> Glory to the king. And I'm able to be here uh, with y'all here tonight. But pretty much in a nutshell, um, that's where we at when it comes to languages and stuff. So unless people have a good command or the etymology of words, and you have to understand even in this Babylonian so-called Hebrew that we have available to us today, that ain't even the original script. The original script is what is called Paleo Hebrew. And what was before Paleo Hebrew was pictographical. Hebrew and very few people can actually read that and understand it I don't I can't read it and understand it I have to depend upon sources through the power of the Holy Spirit who I can trust and got a witness from that these people know what they're talking about I'm not about to take some some boot liquor that's standing on the street corner in New York cussing out everybody that walks by as if there's some type of authority speaking broken Hebrew and 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 and, and claim them to be an authority on his language no way possible. I, I don't even listen to these college professors, so how, why would I listen to some of them? These college professors are jacked up. Education don't impress me one bit, not at all. What impresses me is somebody love and obedience to the most high God, because after all, when we look at it all, it's all about who you worship and who you obey. That's the truth, and that is the truth straight way. Hallelujah. So here we are sitting here with all this broken Hebrew today and everybody fighting over how you pronounce and stuff, but very few people have the demonstration and the power of the spirit to where they can back up the words that they're saying. But we sure do love contention, don't we? We love arguing, fussing, fighting with each other and stuff, and it's just utter ridiculous. It just let us know how cardinal we are on it. And of course, you do know that the Bible clearly says that the cardinal mind is enmity against Yah. Now, when Paul, the apostle saw, ooh, when he said that over in Romans 7 chapter, he said, I speak to them that know the law. How in the world can I talk to you if you're still trying to process stuff from an English viewpoint or Babylonian modern day Hebraic viewpoint coming from an East, uh, what you call a Western perspective and not an Eastern perspective? How can you understand and begin to understand what I say? I have a daunting task of trying to actually say words to stimulate your mind to get you to understand because, you know, we've been hardwired thinking that we are the sum of all wisdom. We are in a literal mess, aren't we? Um, but the Most High is helping us, though, ain't he? Glory to the King. I will like to say this, that I thank the Father for the testimonies uh, that I'm receiving from each and every last one of you, how your homes are being strengthened. Um, um, and, 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 um, the people are being restored, and most of you are now finding out that Pastor Dollar is not your enemy. I'm actually your best friend. You just didn't know it. It took a little while to know it, but that's all right. I, I'm pretty patient in people uh, coming to the knowledge of the truth or the faith, and that's just the truth. Um, but, you know, we get better and better and better, don't we? We continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And, and you know what I like about it? Um, you, you can listen to the ministry of Straightway Truth for about two months and stuff, and you're ready to tackle any professor out there in the world. I mean, very few people can actually stand against the wisdom that you now understand and know, because you know why? The Most High, Yah, has given you a hunger and thirst. Remember, those are the blessed ones. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And you're being filled, and now you have a hunger for his word. You have a thirst for for that spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit that is holy, working in your hearts and life, and you want to know the truth for the first time in your life, and you're sick and tired of being lied to, and look at the devil, now you're whooping his rear end. Hallelujah. And you're getting him out of his life. Your health is re being restored to you speedily. Your mind and conscience, you're being restored to a sound mind. That is the fruit 
of the Holy Spirit. That is the fruit of a ministry. And you people out there that support me as well as the faithful saints of the Most High God here at Straightway, you are the seal of my pastorship. And that's just the truth. And you know what we're going to do? From here, we're going into the kingdom. We're going to the kingdom. And that is the truth. But anyway, we're going to open up the phone lines. The guest calling number is, is 310-982-4226. If you like to talk to Pastor Dow, don't forget to push number one, and we'll bring you right up on the air. Now, before you come up on the air, make sure that you're not listening to me through your computer, but you're listening to me through your phone. Um, and we'll get to you. Uh, we, we got uh, the phone lines that we're going to uh, keep them open here for a little while until the last person uh, is finished, or you know, at least until the two hours is up. Hallelujah. So the guest call in number 310-982-4226 if you'd like to talk to Pastor Dow. Hallelujah. Now, uh, we got, we were quickly approaching the month of a beep and we'll talk about all that a little bit later. Okay. All right. Caller number 828. This is Pastor Dow. You are on the Straightway Tooth Radio broadcast from North Carolina. How may I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor, Attention Straightway, and everyone else is listening. That is the watchman, ladies and gentlemen, Brother Anton from North Kakalaki. What you got, Watchman? <laughs> um, which uh, you and Sister Ashley were speaking about earlier, about your prophecy. And it made me realize something. That was about the same time, or just a little after that, when Sister Sibyl and I started really getting into it and met you and became deep Israelite. Yep, yep, sure was. <laughs> So, I mean, the most high was moving and shaking everywhere. But I wanted to ask um, ask you something, Pastor, regarding several Sabbath broadcasts ago, towards the end of the program, you know, um, the subject was kind of on anointing mm. of the home. Right. Could you, I was speaking with, well, I'm not going to say who but I think you could know who I may be referring to. I was speaking with someone regarding anointing the home and how it's properly done and who should be the one doing it, be it if it's um, husband or wife in the home. But if it's if the husband is out of way. Well, could you explain that, please, for the listeners, how to properly anoint your home um, to keep the boogeyman out, even if the boogeyman is attached to an individual that's trying to enter your home? Sure, sure I can. Well, it's pretty simple. Number one, you have power and authority because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have him in you. And when you know that you have him in you, that power and authority is the same thing. You know, the Holy Spirit often used many, many symbols throughout the scripture, uh, symbolic as of his power and stuff, to put up barriers and walls against these demonic forces that we have to fight against. And anointing oil just so happened to be one of them. What you do is you can go around and you anoint the doors uh, and the windows because these are, are what you call gateways or doorways and stuff even though spirits are not bound by walls and nothing like that but we just use the doors and windows and you just anoint them in the name of Jesus you say I plead the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus and I curse and rebuke every demonic spirit that has no access and authority to you or your workings in this home in Jesus name and then you walk around the house and do the same exact thing. Far as who can do it, well, remember, in the spirit, whether it be male or female, when it comes to the spirit and stuff, hey, women have just as much as power because they have the same Holy Spirit as we do to cast out devils, to heal the sick, and to do all this in a fight against these demonic spirits, just like a man does. And the Holy Spirit didn't discriminate on that. You just see that it should be the man that should be taken ahead taking the lead, taking the authority in the house and stuff. And boy, I tell you what, what a powerful ministry when you got both husband and wife in unity. And so, you know, a lot of times when we have a lot of demonic spirits and influences and things going on in our homes and stuff, it's because we have what we would call doorways to the spirits. Some of those things could be crosses, 
uh, hexes, vex. It could be tarot cards. It could be owls. Uh, it could be a, a foreign mask objects, statues from other places, um, uh, different symbols, symbolisms and stuff that are satanic. They may seem so innocent and stuff. You know, we we carry a lot of stuff that we shouldn't have when we that we picked up in our previous life prior to conversion uh, that shouldn't be there. And the spirits use those as doorways to have influence and power in, in, in our homes. But when you use the name of Jesus, hallelujah, when you use the name of Jesus, because remember the J and a Y in German both sounded the same, hallelujah. And most people don't know that when they holler, there was no J, there was no J. Yet they ain't getting no results either. But anyway, we'll get on that. <laughs> but anyway, brother, <laughs> but that's how you do it. That is how you do it, and it's really, truly that simple. Uh, thank you, Pastor. And as I look at the chat board, I see that the individual is listening. They're in the chat room, you know, um, logged in. So I really appreciate you taking time to explain it so that they can hear it, you know, from you. I really appreciate that. All right. And um, that's all I had. I just wanted to ask that and, and – um, Co-sign on your prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shalom. Uh, shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Ah, the Watchman. Hallelujah, Brother Anton. All right, we're going to go over here to, uh, it says Washington, caller number 360. This is Pastor Dow. Other straight way to the on the air. How hello, may I help you? Hello. Hello. Pastor Dow, this is John. How you doing, Brother John? <clears throat> I just wanted to comment on the on the name of Jesus stuff. Sure. Um, long, I don't know, not that long ago, but a while back, you even rebuked me right in the middle of the the uh, Sabbath sermon. Don't get caught up in that name stuff, there, Brother John. <laughs> and um, and for anybody that don't know, well, that got my tied up. So I uh, I went and researched myself and. Anybody can do it. You just get online and punch in names of God, names of Jesus, and you'll get a bunch of web pages. And just, it's only take me a second. I'll just go over some of them. There's like 200 names for Jesus. Okay. Elohim, Adonani, uh, Jehovah, Jehovah Yahweh, Jehovah Ryoah, um, El Elyon, uh, L-O-M, and these are all backed up by, by Bible verses. So if you go in there, you can find them all, because I, I checked a bunch of them. Uh, Abba, Almighty, Alpha, Apostle, Altar of Faith, Offer of Life, um, Blessed and Holy Ruler, Branch, Bread of God, Bread of Life, Bride of the Morning Star, Chief Shepherd, uh, Chosen One, Comforter, Commander, Consuming Fire, Counselor, Creator, uh, desire of all nations, uh, deliverer, deliverer, um, eternal God, everlasting Father, faithful and true, firstborn, first fruits, foundation. I like this one here. Friend of tax collectors and sinners. That's in Matthew. Um, glory of the Lord, God who sees me, good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, guide, head of the body, head of the church, holy one, holy of Israel, holy spirit. Horn of Salvation, um, Image of His Person, Emmanuel, uh, Jealous, Jehovah, Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord, Judge, King, King of Kings, King of Ages, Lamb of God, Lawgiver, Leader, Light of the World, Viking Eagle, Lily of the Valleys, Lot and of the Tribe of, Ju of Judah. I like that one too. Um, Lord of Glory, Lord of Hosts, Lord of Lords, Lord of our Righteousness, Love. That's in First John 4, 8. Okay, Brother John, um, what's the next one? The next thing I have to say? No, no, yeah, the next thing, go ahead. We Believe me, we get it. <laughs> Man of Sorrows, Messiah. Okay, I was just saying, I've gone through these, and there's just, uh, there's 200 of them. <laughs> I, 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 I was just laying it on you because you know, couldn't remember a lot. Uh, true light, true witness, truth. Uh, wonderful, word of God. I mean, you know, it, it, it goes on and on. Star of Jacob, uh, spirit of God. Whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever. No, so when I pray for too many more, I don't get hung up on a name as long as, as that name was in the Bible, well, then then that's a good one. You don't just nickname them dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but you probably could, you know. 
And uh, most high, I like that one too, but I usually start off with, uh, you know, I say Yahweh, oh, dude. Yeshua, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Jeremiah, Isaiah, David, and Solomon, the the creator of Adam and all things seen and unseen. So basically, Please hear my prayers. So basically, it's just a fruitless argument, then, isn't it? Well, that's, that's what I'm trying to do, and I'm telling all, all you saints out there that got any doubts on this, just look up on the computer the names of Jesus or the names of God, and they're all over the computer, and they're back, backed up with, get them, dog, back, backed up with uh, Bible verses to, you know, to prove all the different names, you know what I mean? Hallelujah. That's all. And, and uh, for everybody listening, I don't know how many people listen, there's a lot of people listening. Somebody get this man a generator so if the power goes out, we can still receive the word. You oh, hear me? we just got a generator. The idea is, is if the phone line will still be available for the. <laughs> we just got a oh, generator. Okay. Do, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, then, um, and then as soon as I get off here, I've been putting it off and I shouldn't have, but I'm getting my olive oil out like you just told the watchman to do. Mm -hmm. He told me to do it, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to get my olive oil out as soon as I hang up here. And me and Karen's going to pray uh, and sprinkle it on the doors and stuff. So all we do is just, like, um, ask that the Lord bless this olive oil in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Yep, good enough. And then just, and then just sprinkle it around? Yep. All right, all right, brother, I'm sorry. I just wanted to get that name thing out. I was going to do that on the last show when couple shows back when people were talking about name stuff, but I didn't get called on because I was late. Yeah, put your finger I on the oil. I want to clarify that for everybody. Yeah, put your finger on the oil, you know, in the oil, and then just put it on the doorpost, on the sides, and on the windows like that. Just don't throw it all over the house, man. <laughs> no, no, I ain't gonna. I'm going to stick it on all the openings. All right. Anyway, I'm on it, and I'm out of here. I'll be listening while I do it. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, brother John. Shabbat shalom, my friend. Bye. Hallelujah. And he is my friend. And he's my brother, a very close brother. That's brother John Reed from Washington. Going to New York. Hallelujah. Caller number 718. This is Pastor Dow. You're on Straightway Truth. How may I help you? What's up, brother Dow? Well, I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm all right. I just got a ticket yesterday so I can come to um, Passover. So so I caught him Wednesday. I caught him two days before. Passover, right? Okay. I'll have, I'll have a place to stay, right? Okay. To sleep at, right? Well, don't worry about it. We'll, um, we'll, we'll, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll put you in a tent. Yes. I call, I call my airplane. I don't drive. I call my airplane, so. Well, all you have to do is make sure you send me an email. Give me very good details, too, brother, at your arrival time so we can have somebody there to pick you up from the airport. Yes. I'm, I'm, before I leave, I'll, I'm, I'm call y'all anyway. I'm call y'all ahead of time, so. Well, I'm at the airport. I'll be there. All right. That's all, that's all I want to say. Hey, I'm and, and by the way, when we pick y'all people up at the airport, go down to the airport to the outside where it says departure. That's where we're going to drive up and pick you up. Don't sit there and wait inside the airport for us to park the car and come in and look for you. You be outside waiting on us, and we will have somebody there. Now, you're familiar with, believe me, you will not miss the saints of the Most High Yah. And we'll okay, pick y'all up. I'll wait. I caught you off. So make sure you go outside where it says departure to where the cars can be able to come drive by and pick you up, and then we'll head on out, okay? Okay. Because you don't. I don't know y'all anyway. I'll wave anyway. We don't live. I'll, I'll exit anyway. Exit. What are you about to say, Pastor? So I cut you off. Well, yeah, we, we don't live next door to the airport. We live about an hour and 45 minutes away from the airport. Yeah, y'all live like two hours. Yeah. Y'all live, live, live away from the city anyway. Y'all self, the cell phone doesn't work anyway. Right. Yeah, I'll tell them that. I got my ticket, right? Okay. I'll show, I'll show my family, right? While I was going. They Google Earth it, right? They zoom in where you at, the location, right? Where you at right now? They say, oh, you're going to words, son? You're a cult. You're a cult. You're going to a cult. We call this uh, Jim Jones. I laugh at them like they crazy anyway. They don't want the book anyway. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That's dumb. They don't know anyway. I just laugh at them. They don't know. Oh, well. But they know the truth anyway. They know. They know anyway. 
you you drank gallons of fluoride, but it, every human being had a truth in them anyway. Any human being, I don't care if you say that truth instinct. All right, brother. All right, now I see y'all. Shabbat shalom. Bless you Shalom, yeah. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go to Pennsylvania. Going to Pennsylvania. Call the number 484. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the straightway truth. How may I help you? Hello, Pastor Dow. Hey. Hey, Shalom. How you doing? Having a blessed Sabbath so far? Yeah, yeah, doing pretty good. All things considered, doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming from the little village of Egypt in Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, I've been starting awakening, like, in 2010. Like, I guess I'm kind of a late bloomer. But, um, I mean, when I was younger, like, I was always looking for, like, evil things. I, I was into the wrong side because my previous girl, she was Wiccan, mm. and I was raised a Christian. And um, I, I was a doc Christian, actually, and, like, you know, it, it didn't mix well with me and, and the Wiccan girl, you know. So I started to end up, like, looking more into her stuff, and, like, she had a Ouija board and all these, like, spells and stuff, and she wasn't really too much into it, but, like... I was like, I was always looking for something evil, and I could never find it. Like, something was protecting me the whole time. Like, nothing ever really happened until I sat, I sat back, and I wasn't working much at work. And um, I started thinking. I started seeing things more. And, like, I was like, what's going on? And I've I, I seen that. It's all around me. Like, the evil's all around me. And then that pushed me right into the word, like, straight bam into the word. And um, I saw one of your first videos I ever seen was on the swine, and and uh, it was like bringing about swine, and um, I I just love that video. Like, you just hit me that I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know. And um, I, I, there was one part where he's like, I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he said it. I, I played that part like over and over and over again. And um, um, you you are really straight up and straightforward. Um. I mean, I know as far as the names, I guess it's whatever we were led, whatever, however we were led, you know, like I, I was led by Ahaya and, and, and Yeshaya. But I mean, I'm just going to go with what, what's leading me. Sure. Um, I don't have no but, problem but, with that. Yeah. But the one thing I want to know is what's with all the rivers and bodies of water starting to turn red since 2010? Well, I haven't heard anything about that yet. Well, actually, just a week ago in Memphis, Tennessee, there was a uh, basin um, to the river in Memphis um, turned red. There was, a, there was a brother from the GOC that took a video of it. Um, if you just type in um, on YouTube, prophecy alert, water turns to blood. Um, he took a whole video of it, and he put up from since 2010 in Antarctica, there was um, the ice that split open, and um, it was pouring red. And um, in Iran in 2010, and then in the 2011, in Bulgaria, and then China, and then um, there was a few other places, Australia, and Texas, uh, last August or July in 2011, a river in Texas turned red. And actually, uh, the Beirut River in Lebanon, right now where there's um, thousands of people getting slaughtered in Syria, um, the Beirut River's been flowing red. And there's a video on that, and I was wondering, um, <laughs> is that, like, definitely a prophetic sign? <laughs> well, I do know that if it, you know, first of all, number one, just because water turns red doesn't mean that it's blood. You know, we haven't had a prophecy, uh, we haven't yeah, had... I don't know if that was symbolic or, like, actual. Well, there's nothing symbolic. If it says blood, it means blood, just like it did in Egypt. I mean, it's not just blood red, it means actual blood. Um... And, and, and so, you know, we don't know uh, a, a exactly uh, what's really truly going on. I mean, I can't really confirm or deny uh, unless I'm there myself. You know, what I mean, a lot of people have a way of inflating a lot of things, but we have to look and see the time frame that we're in. As far as the plagues that's supposed to be taking place, you know, there's a time frame for these plagues to be hitting the face of planet Earth. Yeah, I just think it's weird that it's, it's starting to increase and happen more in different spots. Like, I don't know if it's, like, strategic spots and it's end up, end up going to be, like, all over. <laughs> but I just think it's really, really very strange that it, that all these bodies of water rivers are starting, like, to turn red. I understand. There's going to be a lot more of a strange thing 
that's going to be taking place. They're going to be signed in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And, and of course, the Messiah said, and up on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity to see and the waves roaring and wage. I mean, we got a whole bunch of things that's coming up on the scene. I think the biggest thing we need to look out for is what the prophecy of the book says, that men's hearts will fail them for fear as they look upon the things that are coming upon this earth. People better get their heart ready. They better get their heart ready and prepared. And what was written on our hearts with the law of the commandments? Yeah. As long as we have the law, the statutes and commandments written on our hearts, we don't have to worry about being fearful. And people think they're saved by grace alone, but it's grace and faith that are two separate things. Yeah, they don't understand, but, you know, that's the reason why we're here. We're here to help them to understand because, you know, coming out of the doctrine of Christianity, boy, that, that's a that's a gauntlet you've got to run through in itself. Yeah, and also one other thing is, um, you know, I'm having a hard time with my parents because, like, it, 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 like, I know that they've grown up and been, like, um, pretty much programmed hardcore with their churches and like I'm trying to explain them and show them right there, and it's like I don't understand. Like the, it's like I'm showing it right to them in the book, and I'm, I'm even saying verses in context. Like I'm not even like changing words around, it. and I'm like, listen, like, <laughs> and it's like they're against me, and and they think I'm possessed, and like, like they they pulled up from like in my past because I was with my ex girlfriend, and she was wicked, and they would, you know, they would pull that up and be like, well, you. You know, something must have happened when you were with her, you know, like something took hold of you. And, um, you know, like, uh, and, and I know that one of the commandments is to honor thy father and mother. But at the same time, like, um, I'm, I'm standing against them. Well, you know, after, you know, the, the, the Bible is very clear after the first and second admonition reject. In other words, what you need to do, brothers, you need to. Just have learn how to have faith to yourself and don't argue and fuss with me. I'm sure you have spoken to them on, on more than two occasions. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, one thing's for sure. You're not the Holy Spirit. You've already, you could have been planting. You could have been watering, but you have to wait till y'all gives the increase. No, you, right. And then, you right. Need to, then and more than anything, you need to keep your peace about you. Yeah, that I have, and I'm trying to help others along too. And um, guide them to your show. And, like, I like the GOC. I don't know if you know the GOC, Gathering of Prince Church. I don't know too much about them. I know that I have a lot of their listeners that comes over here. And then after a while, they just, they come and they start listening. But I don't know too much about the brethren over at the Gathering of Christ Church. But I do know this. Anybody who's doing anything they can to tear down Satan's kingdom, I'm, I'm they ain't my enemy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then putting on the full armor so he can just deflect every dirt. Well, you know how people do, brother. Um, you know, they just, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, I am interested in people who want to know how to manifest the power of Yah. You know, rather than just reading books and getting knowledge and stuff, we need to know how to actually become doers of this word. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean I've been, if, if I feel like I'm doing something wrong, like sending, like, um, if I'm about to do anything against the command, it's like, it, it, it hits me, like, pronto. Like, like if before, like, let's say, like, in early 2011, you know, I wouldn't even recognize it, like, oh, man. And then I'll look back, like, a month later, be like, oh, man, I messed up, or I slipped up. But now it's more and more where I'm, like, it's, I'm caught, like, as soon as I do something, like, I'm caught, like, right in the spirit. Well, let me ask you a question. Those people over at GLC, do they speak in tongues? No, I never heard of speaking tongues. Well, then they ain't got the Holy Spirit. They may have a spirit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is like that, like uh, that garble or whatever. That <laughs> I don't know what people yeah. call it. I, I call it tongues because that's what. The, I was also researching what really happened on the Pentecost and about um, that in these days. Like I don't think. If you're, how do you know who it's really coming from? Like, if it's not a deceiving, deceptive, like posing. I've been speaking in I've been speaking in tongues for over twenty years, and I've cast out devils, healed the sick, and I've actually raised a person from the dead. So I don't think that there's no way that that could be the works of the devil if I'm speaking in tongues. Oh, oh yeah, I did not know that. Hey. Um, <laughs> 
And, and not only do I cast out devils, but I actually teach people how to cast them out. I teach them how to heal the sick because that's what Christ said. Go and teach all nations, baptizing them, name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I, I mean, I don't understand why, you know, you go read the book of Acts, you read the book of Corinthians. It's hard to get past that. You read the prophecies. I mean, people can research and explain stuff away. But when it comes to the demonstration and the power, the actual doing the works of Christ, what Christ did, we don't see too much of that manifested today. We see a lot. Oh, not, we see a lot of words. You brought out. <laughs> yeah, we see a lot of words. More I know about you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, we see a lot of people trading words. We see a lot of words. We see a lot of people getting built up with knowledge, but we don't see too much action. We don't see the action that the apostles did. We don't see the action that the prophets did. We don't see the actions that Christ did. And no, remember, a kingdom divided against itself, it cannot stand. And Satan cannot cast out Satan. There's just no way. And so I, I'm doing all these works. All the saints here straightway is doing all these works. So I'm wondering if, if, if all these people out there who claim to be of Yahweh, who claim to be of Yeshia, if they claim to be, why come they are not literally physically doing his works? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I'm taking the first steps. Like, I mean, I guess it's a step-by-step -step progress. So. Well, I do know we ate hey, over... Um, over 90% of the people that's in this room, they all speak with tongues. Every single, 90% of them. Watch this. If you speak in tongues as the Spirit of Yah give the utterance, type in the words glory. Watch and see how many people come up in this room right here. In the chat room. Watch this one. It takes, we've got a little, got a little delay there. You seeing that? <laughs> yeah. So, brother, I mean, to tell you, something's going on because all these saints right here, every single one. <laughs> hey, and there are people who are seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm, I'm definitely getting there, but um, there's not too many people around my area <laughs> in the period of Lehigh Valley. I mean, I have two friends that are on on, on, on the on, on the track and we're progressing and we're we're. You want to go gung ho because we are thirsty, and you know we we, we just want truth because we we don't we're against this world because we know it whole, the whole world is life and wickedness right well, let, now. Well, so. well, let me tell you something right here, brother. One thing you need you need the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life to be able to fight this kind of warfare that we're in. Especially when the fire is really on. <laughs> yeah, you need it. Uh, let me let me get let me read Acts two four, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you can get people that, to explain away tongues, languages, all this and all that. But then when you look at, hey, remember by their fruit you shall know them. Let me go read you what Christ said over in uh, Mark sixteen, okay? Because I want you to start. I want you to start seeking this. We're going to read Mark sixteen. And I'm going to start at verse 14, okay? And I'm going to read it in context. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat, and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Did you hear that? Right. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Have you seen any of that done yet? Um, <laughs> not around here. <laughs> well, we, well, we do it all the time. It, it, it's so much commonplace to us. It's just common amongst us. And, and, and look at this, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That don't mean you go hold snake handling services. That mean having power over spirits. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, you know, I'm starting to question all these people today who claim to have the Holy Spirit, who claim to be operating under the unction and power of his spirit, but yet they are void of the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ said he would give us when his Holy Spirit is manifested. Well, there's a lot of people here that are pretty much lifeline that don't know really 
anything that's going on. Well, the first thing uh, I need for I you to do, hold, 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 hold one second. First thing I need for you to do is get your eyes off other people and get it on you. Uh, you can't be oh, waiting. I am off other people. Yeah, you, 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 like, do you know anyone that uh, is affiliated that's up around my area? Um, not like in, connected. Well, you, you're in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. I, there's, if you go in the room right here, Brother Robbie, let me see if he's in the room. Brother, see that R O O B two R's two R R O B I three one seven two nine. Brother Robbie and Rose Johnson. See, sister, it's Rose Johnson. Them, them two, Rose Johnson. They're in the Pennsylvania area. All right, that's that, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, you need so you need a private message them in the room and get can get in touch with them. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not on a computer right now. So. Okay. All right. All right, brother. Good speaking with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. You know, it should strike everybody as odd um, that you got all these people out here, but then look at this. Then they deny the works of the Spirit. I didn't say that he denies it, but it's amazing how these, these ministries of today literally deny the work of the Holy Spirit. Then they say they believe the Bible. I mean, it's beyond me. Well, it looks like it's going to be a short night here tonight. Hallelujah. Um, you want to talk to Pastor Dow, the guest calling number 310-982-4226. We have a lot of people listening in the room, but if you want to speak with me, you're going to have to actually press one. I see somebody in there from San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico. That means that I know who that is. That is Sister Nelly. That's who that is. And Erica. That is Brother Eric Gonzalez family. If not, it may be Molly Elizabeth. <laughs> I know it's somebody, but see, we got Israelites scattered all over the place. So the guest calling number, if you like to talk to me, um, you have to call in, and then I think you have to press the number one, and that gives me a little yellow sign up on my switchboard to let me know if you want to talk to Pastor Dow if you have a question or not. So that number is 310-982-4226. That is the guest call in number. Hallelujah. And if you don't want to talk to me, Pastor Dow will talk about something here just for a second. And then from there, I'm going to go to bed. And I promise you that. Glory to the King. All right. You know, we got the seven feast of the Most High Yah uh, coming up here. We're only about one month out from the season of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Hallelujah. Matzah. That's what it is. And the Feast of Passover, which is Pesca. Pest God. So we have these seven feasts that are coming up. We're going to deal with the spring feast, hopefully, in the first um, uh, dealing. Hallelujah. And I hope that, that some of you got um, the Bible called the Scriptures, because I'm going to be using that. Uh, I'm going to be using that. I told you we're going to start being using a lot of that extensively, because uh, the more I study, uh, the more inadequate I see that the King James Version of the Bible is when you're going to deeper levels of understanding and really are truly studying the word. Is it a good translation? Best translation we have in the English, uh, but it's not the best translation out there. As a matter of fact, I'll show you mine real quick. Uh, I have. Mine's a little bit bigger right here. I have this book right here, and it's called See, the scriptures. And if you get eSword, if you get eSword, you can go and, and just type in the scripture and then eSword. You can download a copy of this to your eSword. Um, and and uh, you can start using it. And, you know, I'll show you one reason why I like this Bible. Um, uh, because, you know, let me give you something. Let's go to Johanna. If you look in there, I'll show you on the screen right here. You'll see, see how it restores the name of the Most High in it, it stores the names of the Most High. And not only that, it actually uses terms and languages that we are becoming more and more familiar with, like set apart, um, Jerusalem. You know, it's taking us back to our culture. It's taking us back to our heritage. And, and I love my culture. I love my heritage. I love knowing who I am. And all of you people out there that are Israelites, you should love knowing who you are. You should. Um, you should actually love knowing who you are. Uh, you should thank the Father that you are an Israelite now. So now guess what? 
you've got a culture and a heritage to learn. You can't be Americans. Women, I'm sorry, but it ain't holy for you people to wear pants. You're not a Gentile no more. You're not a Greek. So you need to change your dress and be holy. When you come to straightway, you will see holiness. Um, and you should um, seek out. I mean, I'm waiting on um, Brother Steve um, to shoot me down the final copy of the newsletter. We just went ahead and cut off because it's like 20 pages long. Man, I didn't expect that newsletter to be that long. It might as well have been a book. Um, but um, I go into great detail talking about a lot of things like that, and too, and plus giving understanding of the feast and stuff. Um, but, you know, you, you, you people are holy. I mean, I'm sure the Daughters of Zion uh, enjoyed the broadcast that I did. I mean, I've done a lot of broadcasting this week. Brother Mike Holland uh, and I was on um, earlier this week uh, during Bible study for three hours. And I do got a copy of that. And I just have to see if I can get Brother Shane to transfer it to this because I don't know how to do it. Uh, Brother Shane does, but I really don't know how to do it. Um, yeah, you're right, Brother William. I need to go ahead and get myself together and, and try to get this book down and, you know, and, and to, um, cause I, I got so much in my head, but I know y'all hear it on Shabbats. I have so much in my head. You know what I was doing early today when I had a little time, I went back and looked at a teaching that I did. Um, I forget the name of the DVD, but I did it in the month of, uh, what the world calls September. Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will. You you do the next one, Brother Jermaine. Maybe. Brother Steve does a real good job, too. Um, I, I got a, um, what what we call that? Uh, ah, lose my mind. Lose, lose my train of thought. Um, but anyway, that's a good book to have. It's good scriptures. As a matter of fact, Sister Carol, uh, she, she usually... Uh, when she grabs a Bible now and you see her doing her money devotion and studies, the first one she grabs is the scriptures. And she says the first one she grabs at night, too. She says, she'll grab this one. And uh, and I can't blame her. I can't blame her at all. It's a very good translation. Do I see things that I would change? Sure I do, but I'll tell you what, it's a whole lot better than King James. And that is the truth. Because it's restoring our culture and our heritage back to us. Yes, sir. Okay. Brother, if you're in your home, your children can wear pajamas. Your, this you and your family. Your wife can wear pajamas. Your children can wear You are a family. But when you're presenting yourself to other people and stuff, that's when you change your dress. For instance, um, if you're staying over at our house or something like that, I mean, Sister Carol carries herself in a way she still wears a, a skirt and stuff. But when it's just our family and stuff... <laughs> Yeah, you can walk around in pajamas. Sure you can. Sure you can. In front of each other, it's no problem whatsoever at all. Hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Sure you can. I'm glad that Sister Crystal loves it too. It's a good book. It really truly is. But we're going to be using that here a lot. As a matter of fact, coming up the next feast days, uh, teaching that I do, we're going to be using that translation a lot. You're going to see it a lot uh, here straightway. And I'm going to Use it in comparison. You know, how'd y'all like my comparison NIV, a uh, King James versus NIV? You know, the King James versus NIV. How'd y'all like that? Huh? Oh, boy. Sure it is, brother, but who cares what you're wearing in your home? <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. I, I, you know, some of y'all, some of y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all. Sure, our sisters wear tights under their skirts. They sure do. Some of them wear tights and um, under their skirts and stuff because who's going to know what the sister got under their skirt? Our sisters wear tights. You know, we, we're in Tennessee. And, and as a matter of fact, um, Under Armour makes some real good warm tights for, for sisters to wear so they can stay warm. They still have their skirt on. Um, that, that ain't nothing to, to embarrass. Not at all. Not at all. Um, and if y'all private message me and ask the question, I'm not going to drop your names or nothing like that. But yeah, daughters, I need to be warm. I mean, you even see that in some Arab countries. And too, you'll see women that they will have a pair of uh, what you call slacks on. Um, but if they show more, they shouldn't do it. Because, you know, the Muslim way is not the way that you need to be looking when it comes to holiness and truth. And they have their skirt on and stuff. But but our sisters in the wintertime, sure they do. They have... um. um uh, long underwear and stuff that they wear close to their skin and stuff and, and tights and stuff to keep warm and, and you better believe it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. That's what we do. 
Glory to the king. Glory to the king. And so, uh, hey, wear some of that compression as long as you still are holy. Present yourself in holy. I talked on the broadcast also at length uh, a little bit about, see, I, I'm sure a lot of sisters are going to talk about pants and uh, head coverings and dress and stuff. And I didn't talk nothing about that. I mentioned it from time to time, but I didn't talk about that. The main thing is holiness because our sisters are holy, every single one of them. And you know what? It, it, my heart, you, you just don't understand what it does in my heart when I see um, the, these you brand new Israelites. I mean, sometimes you may even see it. You may see me go high and I'll turn around, walk away. Or I'll turn my head real quick and act like I'm going doing something because I got little tears welling up in my eyes because you're so beautiful and the holiness that the Most High is bringing you to does my heart good. He brings tears to my eyes now. It really truly does when I see that sisters really truly get it. I mean, they, they get it because I want our sisters to be honorable as well as our brothers. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to the King. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be using a lot of this, and I'm going to do a lot of comparisons with this book right here as opposed to other. And I've got a few other books that I use, too. I think it's about time for me to do another video. Um, but I know if I do another video, boy, some of you people go out there and buy every book that I show up on the screen, and that ain't the intent for it. <laughs> oh, boy, but hey, that's good that y'all are, 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 are really true. I, I love y'all. Y'all, y'all just beautiful Israelites. Y'all really, truly are. Y'all just Israelites. And it's beautiful. I love men being strong in their homes. I really, truly do. I love strong men, strong Israelites. And I love um, holy, holy, uh, meek and quiet spirit daughters of Zion. Don't worry about it. Uh, we win. Oh, by the way, on the silver front, um, the fundamentals are still the same. I'm sure y'all heard me say that over and over and over again. Um, you know, I, we're at the prefaces or something. I'm telling you that, you know, it, it, we're standing uh, for sure. For, uh, I mean, if things keep going where it's going off, a breakout this year. Hallelujah. Oh, no, I won't put it up for viewing online. I may make it available, but I won't be putting it up online. Um there's a lot of stuff that I just don't put up for line. And the reason why I don't, if y'all notice, it's been a long, long time since I put preaching and teaching online. I usually got it there on the online church. You know what I mean? I let it sign. But the reason being is, is because I'm trying to follow um, the sentiments. And I could be wrong. Uh, Cast not your pearls before swine and give not that which is holy unto a dog. I mean, if you go and look at the testimony, how many of y'all saw the testimony of um, Sister Nellie? Was that not a beautiful testimony of a conversion of a woman who came out of one of those mega churches um, and, 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 you know, was very, very well liked her and her husband both? Oh, uh, OK. Well, I think I got the video of it. And if I do, brother, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll, I'll get Brother Shane down there tomorrow and, and we'll make um, a copy of that thing. OK. Hallelujah. Um, like I said, I just got finished talking to somebody. I may take that video and, and just get Brother Shane to convert it to DVD for me and make it available. Brother Shane, you hear that? If, see, if I tell Brother Shane he needs to do that, it'll get done faster because if, if you wait on me to do it, you may get it in five years. <laughs> but if I tell Brother Shane them to do it, they'll get right on it. Him and Brother Juan, they'll get on it right on it just like that. But if you went and look at Sister Nellie's testimony, and it's a beautiful testimony. You wouldn't believe how many comments I've had to ban, how many comments I had to block, um, how many people I've had to ban and comments I had to remove. Because they, I mean, they they called her, they called her a bitch and everything else. And my sister ain't that. That's just how wicked this world is. They called her all kind of names and stuff. And, and I, I banned, I can't tell you how many people. Now, see, that's why I don't believe in now casting our pearls before swine and giving that which is holy, which is a word unto dogs. Because believe me, I view everybody in that world that's not an Israelite, they're all dogs. Every one of me, I don't care if they male dogs or female dogs, to me they're dogs. And that's all there's to it. And I get that from the Most High Yah. That's where I get that from. You better believe it, they're dogs. And um, 
Because, you know, a lot of people are pretty brave behind these computer screens typing and stuff like that. I guarantee they wouldn't say that about my sister with me standing in front of them. That's just the truth. And I'm not a violent man either, but that's just certain things I'm not going to tolerate. You got that right. I'm big on families. You men, I'm big on you taking care of your families and being faithful only to your wife. Do y'all, you knuckleheads hear me out there? You love your wife. Because that's what Yah says, and you do it. And you secure her with your love. And you women out there, you submit yourself to your husband. Only your husband. And y'all get those homes straight. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all get those homes straight. We need holy homes. That's what we need in all we're living in. Hallelujah. I'm big on that. Because the structure of the family is where it's at. How in the world are children going to understand what real true love is if there ain't no love in the home? Every time you turn around, mom and daddy sitting up here biting off each other's head like a pit bull and a rock wild. They're going to learn love by your example. Hallelujah. Don't keep loving the house. We well, is real. And that's all there is to it. Because he is real. So, husband, you love your wives, and you dwell with them according to knowledge. Now, in order to do that, you got to get out of your dumbness and start picking up the word right here and learning what real true wisdom is. Glory to the king. And don't worry about it. Men, they don't mind. A man love it when another man just talk to him straight. That's what men is. Men don't like this, this riddle in terms and going in bushes. They just, just talk to me straight, man. That's how men are. That's how men are who, who are full of testicular fortitude. That's how men are. They're men. Now, don't worry about it. If I got to rebuke you sometimes, sometimes you ought to be glad I ain't rebuking because I don't, first of all, number one, I don't want to get no, no block to myself. All right, let me see. I, I'm over here running my mouth. I didn't see that. All right, we're going to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Hallelujah. 787 San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's Pastor Dow. You're on Straightway Truth. How may I help you? Hi, Pastor Dow. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's me, Erica. I know who you is. That is. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, you? I just wanted to say um, hi to all the Straightway family, um, to Sister Ashley and Sky and Maisie and everyone else there. Hey, you know we got your camera up here, don't you? Yeah, I got a message on Facebook. I noticed like five minutes while we were down the road, but we couldn't turn back. Yeah, yeah. I found it the next morning. Sure did and bought it in the house. But don't worry, Will. We'll get it to you. Okay, awesome. Um, I wanted to say, yeah, I saw some of those comments that they put on Facebook about my mom. It, was, it wasn't nice. Um, and also... Um, my actually my mom's sister, she had actually seen the video and she called our previous pastor and then that's when our previous pastor had finally called us and she discussed about our, us leaving. And we had left, you know, like around November, December, so it's it's funny how he waited until now, you know, the beginning of March to finally call us. And it was because of that video that he had seen on Facebook. So it, it started a lot of controversy in our previous church, and um, a whole bunch of uh, the people there were talking bad about my mom and me, and I was like, wow, that's, that just shows, you know, how we're going to be persecuted just like Jesus was back in the day. You know, we were never persecuted when we were Christians, but now that we're Israelites, you know, we're persecuted by family, by friends, by our previous churches and stuff. So, Yeah. Sounds like y'all are good Israelites to me, but see, that's the reason why the, that's why the most I had to get y'all away from those hypocrites anyway, because all they were doing was stage playing. They really truly wasn't y'all brothers and sisters, but you know what? Maybe one or two people will look at that video and then they'll say, you know what? Could be something to it. And then they'll click watch one of my videos and click watch another. And y'all may be able to draw one or two people out of there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's awesome. And um, it was cool what you were telling that other guy about the Holy Spirit and tongues and how you know when it's God giving you that 
that spirit because um recently my other aunt she had called us and like she had contacted us and was saying oh well we have the holy spirit so aren't we going to heaven and in my mind i was like well how do you know if the holy spirit you know um is if the spirit is from god or is from satan and um my aunt and all my other family and all my other um friends from from my previous churches um, in those churches, I've never seen them cast out devils or heal, or heal people from sicknesses. I've never seen that in any of my previous Christian churches. And now that I became an Israelite, I'm constantly seeing people be delivered and be healed and be freed from spirit, evil spirits and demons and all this stuff. And it's like, that's how you know that that's the true spirit of God. And it's like really amazing, you know? Hallelujah. Sister Erica, why don't you tell everybody here in the room how old you are? Um, sixteen. Sixteen years old, and and you are <laughs> you are an Israelite, and you love holiness, huh? Yes, I absolutely do. Why don't you tell everybody what you thought about your visit to Straightway? Uh, it was beautiful. Um, the very very first day that I got there, I had went with my friends Sky, Maisie, um, and and their mom Alyssa to see the goats. And right when we got there, we saw, um, I believe her name was uh, Peace. She was having a baby goat, and I saw the baby goat being born. Um, and I was able to name him. He it, he was so cute. He was um, black with white spots, and I named him Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so awesome. Um, I saw Frost there, and that's a big deal for me because since I, I lived in Miami um, just until last week, and now I'm in Puerto Rico, so I never see snow ever. <laughs> so uh, when I saw frost there, I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, there's snow here. And it was, it was really amazing. Everything was so beautiful. How's the weather down in Puerto uh, Rico, Erica? Uh, the the weather, um, it's, it's good. It's, it's very cool up here in the mountains because down down where the city is, there's a lot of humid and heat. But when you when you're living in the mountains, it's um it's a very you know nice wind you know that that cools us off and stuff. It's really pretty up here. All right. But I but I miss it so much at Straightway. Um, the the like presence of God was right there, and I felt so peaceful there. I wanted to stay there forever. It was it was so amazing there. <laughs> All right, sister. Y'all make sure y'all keep listening, okay? Yeah, I, I had one more question. I had a question um, about about head coverings. Um, I know in First Corinthians eleven, it talks a lot about head coverings, um, but I know that they it sort of makes it seem that there's different reasons. Why we can why we should wear um, head coverings? You know, one one way it says that we should wear head coverings. You know, as a sign um, of submission towards our husband. Um, another one, another verse mentions how we should wear it in whenever we're prophesying or or, um, or praying. And then um, you know, there's different verses that talk about modesty. And that could also be another reason to wear a head covering. So I was wondering, um, would you know to wear a head covering um, through the like? Would the Holy Spirit lead you to wear the head covering for one of those certain reasons, or what would be the proper reason to wear a head covering? Well, a daughter of Zion, it's our culture. Number one, Erica, it's it's a it's our culture that we you know, daughter of Zion should be wearing it at all times, and the reason why that they should wear it at all times because you know why? Check this out. You know, the Bible teaches us we ought to pray without ceasing. Isn't that right? Yes. So many times you'll be walking around and you'll be talking to the Most High Yah, and then guess what you got to do? You got to go and rush and put on a head cover and, and just to say a quick prayer <laughs> real quick. And But if you're already ready, because our sisters, you know, they talk to the Most High Yah all day long. Now, let me give you an example yes. of a married woman wearing a head cover. If you go to Numbers, I'll give you a study, okay? I'll give you a chance to do a little bit of study here, okay? Okay. If you go to Numbers, the fifth chapter, there's a law of jealousy, you know, in case if a woman, if, a, if he suspect that his wife was unfaithful, there was a law of jealousy. And if you notice, one of the first things that the priest did was take the head covering off the woman's head. Yes. So there are many, many examples, and you'll get the rest of it in the newsletter. You'll get the rest of it in the newsletter. Okay. 
and you'll read about it. But, you know, we ought to pray without ceasing, especially our daughters of Zion. You definitely should. So, you know, that, that you know, to be in the safe side is good for you to wear it all the time. Except, you know, you don't have to wear it in the house now. Yeah, okay. Or, or when you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, when I go out, I should, I, I already wear it all the time. I just wanted to know um, for what reason exactly would be, you know, why I'm wearing it, just in case anybody ever asks me. Sure. Did you, um, did I, did, did I give y'all a copy of the newsletter before y'all left, a rough draft copy? Uh, yeah, but my dad kept the papers. <laughs> oh, so man. when he comes over, he's, yeah, he, he's probably going to send it earlier. But he really wanted to study it, so. I understand. I understand. Well, anyway, we'll get one to y'all, okay? All right. And then some of you people, I may try to, if, if, um, if, um, uh, what you call it, brother, your, your dad said he sent it out today. If some of you people, if, if I get brother Steve to send it to me electronically for us to save paper and stuff and to save postage and stuff, uh, I may send out an, uh, a YouTube video and, and they tell you, say, hey, I got the newsletter done. It's already done. And uh, Steve has electronic and what I can do. And I just shoot it to your email account in a PDF form. Okay. How you say it? I'm sure they're glad to hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I've been keeping in touch with them through email and um, and Facebook. So. All right, Sister Erica. Y'all bless you and have a beautiful Sabbath. Thank you too, Pastor. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, yes. Train up a child in the way that they should go. When they get old, they won't depart from the faith. When you see little Israelites like that, 16 years old, holy, pure, clean. When a man finds a wife, a, 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 a sister, daughter, Zion, grown up in his way, he going to find him a good thing. And he is going to obtain favor from the Most High Yah. I mean, a, a good, holy virgin, that's a gift. I only got one stipulation. You're going to marry one of our virgins, you better bring a diary. We ain't getting married like these little pig, these dogs do out in America. You better bring a diary over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy I went to the show on my head coming on and two women stopped me and told me where I could get good prices on we <laughs> I love it told me she would pray for fast recovery <laughs> sister Bonnie you or something else look <laughs> like that chemo that's cause you in California <laughs> sister Bonnie boy Oh, oh boy. Okay, brother Mike. Man, y'all funny. Y'all literally funny, boy. Y'all fans of the body is on the chat. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go to California here. Call number 424. This is Pastor Dow. You're on Straightway Truth. I'm going to help you. Yes, sir, Dr. Long, Pastor Dow. How are you doing today? Doing all right. How are you, brother? Oh, I can't complain. I can't complain. God is good. God is good. Um, I basically, I just wanted to know, is there any um, literature or books or websites you can recommend, recommend that I can learn about the uh, Hebrew Israelite uh, culture and tradition so I can start trying to live that way? Sure. I got the best book in the world right here. <laughs> Call the Bible. And if you go to my YouTube, yep. And if you go to my YouTube page, if you go to my YouTube page, and you yeah. type in Hebrew uh, or Christian or something like that, and you go on them to my playlist, I've got extensive teachings on that for you to learn from. Okay. I mean, I'm talking about extensive teachings that you can learn from. I go over so many scriptures; it is, I mean, off the chain. That's a very good place yeah. to start. Okay. All right. I, def I definitely will start there because I, I mentioned that because um, it's funny. I was just sitting here talking to my 80-year-old um, uncle. He was just sitting here speaking. And we were speaking about America and how America, you know, has 
done for the last hundred years and how they what they're planning on Iran and he he specifically looked at me and said, uh, you know, that's Israel that's trying to do that. Israel. And I looked at him and I said, uh, Israel, those are, those are a bunch of devils over there. And he looked at me. He cut his eyes and looked at me and said, are you crazy? Those are God's chosen people. Well, that's, now, that's, that's, I, that's because. I was able to explain it to him exactly my point of view. This is why I need to look into first. So I can have uh, information, so I can be able to talk, tell him and explain to him the difference between the Pizarians and Ashkemians and the true children people of Israel. Is he and there? He is, old. is he there listening right now? No, I wish I was next to him right now. I really do wish I was next to him. Well, but the I first, was unable to. Well, the first he was thing you, in his ways, Pastor Dell. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to go to my YouTube videos. Do what I ask you. Go into my archives. Yeah. It is going to save you a lot of steps. You will learn a lot. Believe you me. Okay. Look, I just, I'm definitely going to do that. You said type in Christianity versus um, Hebrew, right? Yeah, or yeah, or put down Hebrew or Christianity or something like that. Or go to my playlist. Go to my playlist, and you'll okay. see a, a list of teachings in there. And believe you me, I break it down pretty simple. Okay, cool. That, that's a that's a good starting place. I definitely want to start there, but I, I, I it's just that I. I want to, I'm sorry. Now, you know, I'm pretty sure it's like a bigger tradition, like to give you an example, like how the Muslims, they have a, a, a place to go to where they can, you know, practice their tradition and, and they're around people who can, like, uh, give them a heads up on the things that they need to do and the way they, they need to live their life. So basically that's the point that I'm at right now where I'm trying to understand the difference in what exactly I need to do as far as in the, in my lifestyle of living. Like I was watching some of the people earlier about the women, how they shouldn't wear the pants, they, you know, and they should dress more like, like how they was uh, like women, from skirts and dresses. I, I wanted I wanted to, a reference where I can go to and, and get all of that knowledge now because I'm ready to dive into all of that stuff right about now. Do you have my other website called straightwaytruth.com? No, I never heard. No. You see that banner behind my head that says Straightway? Yes, sir. There's a I got another website called straightwaytruth.com. Straightway Truth. Okay. Just like it's spelled up here. Dot com. I've got a lot of knowledge on there, brother. All you got to do is spend okay. the time to, and doing the research. It's all right there for you. Every bit of okay, it. Okay, well, I'm, well, I'm going to go there right now because it's all I need to jump into that stuff right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to dive into that stuff right now. And also, I, I don't, uh, is there, you don't have a, um, uh, you know, address? Yeah, yeah, but uh, you want to private message me there because if I put that email address out here, brother, you know how many enemies <laughs> I got, brother? <laughs> okay. All right. I got you. I got you. Definitely. Definitely. I, I definitely. But I appreciate that. Um, your help, Pastor Dow. Uh, um, I'm going to go to the website right now and um, look into that stuff. And I'm going to. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give the. I'll give straight away a call. I'm gonna look at your broadcast tomorrow. You broadcast. Um, sh Shabbat right on Saturdays, right? Saturday. Yeah. It uh. It'll come on. Uh... Oh, well, excuse me. Eleven. To, it'll be on at nine o'clock your time if you're in California. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to um, log into that broadcast, and um, I guess I'll call. You said private message you. I um, I guess I'll call the number to get the um, voice um, the email address. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could um, um, see what I say a straightway co-host. Send him a private message. Yeah. He'll he'll give it to you, but. Yeah, uh, the one way you can do, brother, is just to keep listening and go to those resources I've given you, brother, and you, that's what I'm telling you, there's plenty there for you. Oh, no, absolutely. I'm going to see that's the type, of, the type of brother I am. I'm going to go to that right now by the, by Sunday. By this Roman Sunday, I'll have all of that stuff in my head, and I'll be back at your at your hills asking for more information. <laughs> all right, so, brother. Uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. It's about to to you and everyone at um, Safeway, and you have a, a blessed night. Well, what, what's your name, brother? Oh, oh, my name is Larry. All right, Larry. Good good to meet you, brother. Yes, likewise, likewise. It's an honor and it's a pleasure, likewise. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I, I'm so proud of the work that you're doing for our people because we're now just 
we're just now waking up. We're just now waking up, you know. We, and we're waking up slowly but surely, but we are waking up. And, you know, another thing I wanted to, uh, uh, another point I wanted to make was that, you know, the, the, the things that we consume is, is very important. Everything we consume from this water to taking a bath, we're taking a bath in, in this pollution, in this polluted water is it, crazy. And a lot of this stuff really has held a lot of our people down. It even held me down. I wasn't, I wasn't able to see clearly until uh, a lot of this light start coming my way. But once the light comes your way, you just want to soak it up like a sponge. And this is where I'm at with it right now. And I just want to say that I'm, uh, I see, I can totally see the angle that you're coming at right now. And, and, and what your job is to help. And you need a, a, a lot more people. To, to 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 stand up with you, next to you, and um, I'm and I'm proud to to be talking to you right now, but um, I'm gonna head go ahead and let you go, Pastor Darrell, and I appreciate um your your assistance. I really do. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Man, that's good, isn't it? Another Israelite. Look at it. another Israelite done woke up out of darkness into the marvelous light. Uh, most of you people want to know about the dietary law. You need to go to Leviticus the 11th chapter and read that. Leviticus the eleventh chapter and read that. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. The white clothing that you see on some of the pictures um, that we have, anytime you see us, and, and see this is why it's good that people know. When you see that white clothing, when uh, a picture that you'll see up on the website, that's because we're all wearing white on the day of atonement. Did y'all hear what I said? We're wearing white on the Day of Atonement. Hallelujah. And so once a year, that's when you see all of us wearing white on the website. It's the Day of Atonement. Hallelujah. So, hey, hey people going to call us whatever they want because they have no understanding, if you understand what I mean. So we, we it makes no difference to me where they think we're Muslim. I mean, after all, I mean, Y'all, we all know that Christians got to be some of the dumbest people that they are on the face of planet Earth when it comes to this Bible. These people don't know what this book says. They don't have a clue to what this book says. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the King. All right, got one more caller in here. Florida. Caller number 321. Pastor Dow, you on the straightaway truth? How may we help you? Shalom, Pastor Dallas, Brother Dustin. Shalom, 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 brother. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, brother Dustin. What's happening? Man, check this out. Look, look, look at my offering, brother. I want all you people out there to look at my offering that I got from brother Dustin's daughter. Isn't that beautiful? Now, not only that, look at this. Look at this. This is an offering that Brother Dustin's offered. This is a she look at offer she sent me. Look, there's me, there's Sister Carol, and then there's her. She draws good too, don't she? Ha! And look at this. Yeah, she, this is the one that she actually gave to Sister Carol for an offering. Isn't that beautiful? And then um wrote me a little letter. Hallelujah. What you got, Brother Dustin? Yeah, um, I'm actually coming to you tonight with some, some kind of personal issues. Um, my stepsister is hooked on crack and pills, and so is this man that she's dating. And her the father of both of her children is as well. And recently, her their father of her children moved into my neighborhood. And these people have been avoiding me for some time because, kind of like you, man, I live my life. I run a tight ship. You can say that. And um, they, the girls have been coming over to my house lately, and they've been being influenced. They actually have a good influence in their lives now. And uh, they've been coming over for dinner, and they're actually staying the night tonight. But um, <clears throat> they've been through a lot. They've seen stuff they shouldn't have seen, heard everything that they shouldn't have heard. The youngest is five, and I believe she's been sexually abused because some of the way that I catch her doing certain things and catch her acting certain ways, and I can just kind of tell that she's been exposed to things she shouldn't have been exposed to. But they're very hard to contain children, to say the least. And they're becoming kind of familiar with how I do things the more they're around my daughter. And I just want to know, like, you know, what should be my limits with them? You know, because they're very sensitive. So I want to know kind of, you know, 
what my limits are. <laughs> well, one thing you need to do, you need to pray for the children, yourself and stuff. It's, um, um, you really need to lay hands on them and then break any curses that's been transferred to them. And then if I don't know, oh, I've, take... I've tried with the youngest, but she is very shy. She does not take directions. She likes to stick her tongue out, cross her eyes, she say she's going to break. She's very, very disgruntled. Well, just, and I'm trying. I've been asking her if she knows about Jesus, if she knows how to pray, if she wants to learn how to pray. And I'm kind of trying to open her up to it, but they are, you can tell, man. And so I know, and I'm sensing the, the stuff in the spirit, and that's why I wanted to come to you about it. You know? Well, brother, I mean, they, number one, they're loaded. They're loaded with demonic spirits. And, um, and, and I would tell you what, man, I hate to say it, but it's just a flat out truth, brother. If that little girl's being sexually abused, brother, you need to go ahead and, and, uh, 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 contact the uh, Department of Human Services to get rid of those piece of crap family members who are allowing this to happen to that little girl. But anyway, do you see Mike Holland there in the room, Brother Mike Holland? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Brother Mike Holland has extensive training and history in this area that you're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. I want you to contact okay. Brother Mike Holland. He will give you his phone number by private message. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Brother Mike Holland has a degree in criminal justice and all this stuff. And he, as a matter of fact, he just got two children that was in the same, same, same thing you're talking about that, that's now over his house and he's taking care of them now. Yeah, it's, it's real bad, man, because my parents aren't really compassionate towards the situation. And she came to my front door today and I physically, I don't recognize this, the girl that I grew up with. And both her father's, you know, the baby's dad and her boyfriend are both unrecognizable to what they used to be. I mean, they're real bad. And this is like as bad as it gets. You know, the kids are about as, as bad as it gets. And I run a tight ship, so I'm trying to find where my limits are. The, the oldest really opens up to me. She loves me. But the youngest one is just, it's bad, man. Bro, Dust. So, um. Bro, Dust. Yes, sir. Do you see that name in there in the chat room says Mike Holland? Over to the chat. Yes, sir. I see. Okay. I my, see. Mike, you, you private message him, get his phone number, and I promise you, brother Mike can, can give you a lot of wisdom, a whole lot more than I can in this situation. Okay. All right. I, I definitely appreciate that. And then I had a, a kind of question, too, on top of that. When right. I came into this truth, um, I was studying to be a pastor myself, and uh, I kind of hit it head on, man. I had that conviction in my heart, and, and God put the burden upon me to, to get this right. Kind of come, especially where where I come from, and uh, so one of the things I've been getting caught up on lately, and, and I figured I, I have heard you mention it before, but I haven't been able to find where you talked about it. But I found over twenty one verses where it talks about um, the new moon, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know maybe if you had any insight on that for the observance of new moons. Well, sure, That's sure, it's pretty simple. You know, it's really pretty simple. Um, you know, we got, I can't tell you how many witnesses that there are about observing the Sabbath. The Sabbath comes every seven days. A lot of people don't understand the new moon. As a matter of fact, I'm waiting on Steve to get this one out. I'm actually writing about the new moon in the next newsletter um, because it's, it's such a false doctrine that everybody's caught up in. But the moons, brother, it's very clear. When you, you start at Genesis when you won't understand it for something, and it gives you a perfect understanding. Now, if you keep the, the new moon on the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th, by the time you get back mm -hmm. around the 8th again, brother, you, you're going to miss the Sabbath because the Sabbath comes once every seven days. But you have to understand, brother, that the new moons, brother, they were given for signs and seasons. The new right. moons was given for us to be able to base Yah's calendar off of, meaning his holy feast days, not right. the Sabbath day in itself. Are you following? Okay. The Sabbath day yeah, is still yeah. the seventh day of the week and always has been and always will be. I'll give you an okay. example. I'll give you an example. Let me go over here to Genesis real quick, all right? I'll give you an example over here to Genesis, the first chapter. You know, uh, where, where? Huh? 114. Yeah, look what he says. And, and Yah said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons for days and for years did you hear that 
Yes. Now, read on. And let them be the lights for the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And Yah made two great lights, the greater light to rule by day and the lesser light to rule by night. And he made them stars also. All right. And look at this. And the evening and the morning were the what day? Verse 19. The fourth day, right? Hello? Yes, sir. The evening and the morning were the fourth day in verse 19. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, let's do a little bit of thinking here for a second. That's the fourth day. And if you had, if, since that's the beginning of the creation of the, the moon, if you had yeah. seven days to that, you know, what's, what's seven plus four? Eleven. Hey, you're on eleven day then, brother, so they can't be the Shabbat. <laughs> right. See where you're going? <laughs> but, brother, yeah, it's, it's there, brother, to give us understanding of his times. and see, Just like I say, signs, season, look, days, and years. But when you go read the commandment about the Sabbath, and the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day, the seventh day. And the seventh day is not the first, the eighth, the fifteenth, the twenty-second, and the twenty-ninth. <laughs> but you yeah, have... Man. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to get your insight on that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm going to yeah. include it in the next newsletter, brother. I'll I include a little write-up on it, brother. But it's really pretty simple, brother. A lot of times these people are doing moon stuff, brother. They actually fall in paganism and they just don't know it. It's kind of like Christians following Christmas and Easter and Sunday. Now, believe it or not, Christians are doing exactly what they're supposed to because they're sun worshipers. So they shouldn't complain about worshiping the devil and worshiping the sun because that's what they do. But it, the problem comes in is when they say that they're worshiping Christ. Now, that's the problem. If they would just stick with being sun worshipers, they'd be fine. But don't sit up and tell me that you're worshiping the Messiah, you're worshiping Christ, contrary to what the word says. You're a liar. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. Oh, yeah. And that's the same way that these um, uh, lunar Sabbath people do. They're, they're creating a doctrine that's not biblical, nor is it scriptural. Yeah. Rock on. Well, Shabbat Shalom, and uh, I should see you next month. All right. Bless you, Brother Dustin. Shabbat. Yeah, thank you for the info about uh, Brother Mike there. I'm going to definitely get up with him tomorrow. Sure. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Woo, boy, brothers and sisters, let me tell y'all something, especially all you new precious Israelites. Pastor Dow, Brother Shane, Elder Doug, Brother Richard, Elder Dow, we, and listen, we have all, Brother Doug Bell, we, we've been through all this, and I'm trying my best in a very kind and nice way to save you a lot of steps. I really truly am. But it's hard. See, I, I keep telling y'all, y'all sheep, you act just like sheep. And I got to get my staff and reach out and grab you by the neck. And you keep running off. And next time I'm going to break your leg. I'm going to break that Zoe. That's what I'm going to do. And then from there, I'm just going to let you go on and let the wolf eat you up. <laughs> I've tried my best to save y'all from a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. Believe me. Uh, Sometimes I know our appetite is great. Well, we know that the grass is green here, but it's also green over there. But yeah, there's a wolf over there too. And that's why I'm a shepherd. And I will give you pastors, according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Do y'all understand that? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, I do bless y'all, though. Boy, I do bless y'all. Ah, I'm trying my best to keep y'all in y'all. And, and, but when you got such, a, you know, you, you want so bad to no, 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 you end up going to all the wrong sources. I call it looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in so many places. I forgot the rest of the words. I know you're looking for love. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. Love is in Christ the Messiah. Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. Believe me, y'all stay away from all these other, eating off all these other tables, at least until you get rooted.
and grounded in the word. All right. Try my best. Yeah, you're right, brother. I ain't got no future in Nashville. That's why I moved away from it. <laughs> Well, Israel, hey, we're going to be cutting it off early tonight. Wonderful. Hallelujah. I'll get myself ready for the Shabbat. Um, hey, y'all, y'all need for y'all to be very instrumental in helping to get this word out. Did y'all make the business cards? And did y'all put them in places and stuff trying to help get this word out so that you may wake up one soul and get the glory? And then the Most High said, here, I'm going to give you a crown. For what? Soul winner. What? When I do that? You left this card in. This person picked it up, and now they're Israelite, and I had to come for them. Isn't that something? Man, there's a lot of people that want to know. Now, there ain't a lot of people, there's a lot of people that don't want to know. I mean, you got to understand, we may get one Israelite out of a thousand. One out of a thousand. That's good numbers. That's real good numbers. You get a good, faithful Israelite, one out of a thousand. You would think with all the truth that we preach and teach here straightway that people would just be beating down the doors and try to get here, wouldn't you? You would think for sure if people so-called love the truth like they say they do, that all those people come out of those mega churches, wouldn't you? Nah, no, they don't. They love their tradition. Yeah, they do. They love their tradition above the commandment of Yah. And that's just the truth. Hallelujah. All right, got one more phone call. I'll make this the last phone call for tonight. Call her. Uh, 902, area code 902. This is Pastor Dog on the Straightway Truth. How may I help you? Hi, Pastor. It's Cheryl from Nova Scotia. Well, hi, sister. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, I just have one real quick question. Come on with it. Uh, I know that uh, you're going to be doing some teachings on the upcoming Passover, but I was wondering, I know previously other groups, I've known who keep Passover, they take the whole week off work and whatnot. Um, so I was wondering how it works within the Israelite family. Should I be planning to take a, a whole week off, or is this something that I'm going to be observing over observing over a weekend? Oh, believe me, I'm going to go over in plenty of time, but no, you don't need to take the whole week off for, the, for deserving the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover. No. Okay, that's pretty much, so pretty much I can just, I don't need to schedule any time around that, okay. No, not at all, because actually, I mean, you're already going to be off on the Sabbath, and this Passover this year falls on the Shabbat. Ah, okay. Hey, so you you in the clear, and, and I'm going to go over all that in the teachings, and believe me, like I said, when I get finished with the feast day teaching, and Brother Shane, I'm going to make a DVD of it and stuff to so we, you can have it for future reference and stuff. When I get finished with this, my sister, my daughter of Zion, my fellow Israelite sister, you're not going to have any more questions about the feast days, what you should do, shouldn't do, and all. You, you're going to be well informed. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Pastor, and uh, Shalom Shabbat, everybody, and I hope everyone has a good night. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Good hearing from you, sister. Take care, all. All bye right, bye-bye. Hey, that's a good question that Sister Cheryl brings up. It, and most of you want to know that, but believe me, Pastor Dow's going to cover all of that. I'm going to cover all of that come feast days teaching. Hallelujah. All right, there was a 205. I said I wasn't going to take no more, but anyway, I think I ain't going to take no more now because they're gone. Hey, saints, I do love each and every last one of you. I really, truly do. Um, I'm glad that y'all all getting ready. And by the way, um, uh, I made a decision per, uh, purposely. Now, even though I may have, a, I'm going to get a few rooms and stuff or a few of the saints and stuff. Um, but if you're coming for Passover and stuff, what we're going to do, we're going to have a lot of saints in 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 the houses and in the homes and stuff. Pastor Dow's going to be sleeping in a tent. I'm going to sleep in a tent because some of you saints are going to come and sleep in the tent. And I understand that a lot of you are flying. And when you're flying out here, you can't bring, bring a tent on the, uh, the, uh, the airplane or whatever you call it. Uh, we'll have a few extra tents here, believe me. And we're going to have some cots and stuff like that, too. And we have a, we're going to put the school, put brothers in the school. We're going to put people in every place, in every place all over. So it may be, you know, we're going to have a lot of people here. 
Uh, and believe me, you're going to have a good time sleeping in Tiggas Tabernacle because it's a wonderful time uh, if, for those of you who want to. Uh, now, there are some of you that won't be sleeping in tent. Like some of you, your first time here on the land and stuff, more than likely we end up, we already got the accommodation for you. Um, I've already got my home full. And Sister Carol, I told you, she ain't sleeping in tent. Nah, she'll do it if I tell her, but she ain't going to sleep in a tent until the tabernacle. Sister Carol don't want to sleep in no tent unless the, it's the feast day, the feast of tabernacles. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and Brother Mike bought some air beds up. Did you see those air beds, Carol? Yes, sir, I did. Where are they at? Um, Vicky took them, I believe, to the shop so we can have them set up. All right. Okay, I remember Brother Jermaine. I had one set back for you. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, well, uh, bring bring some of those air things, brother. And yeah, but we're going to have cots and stuff like this. We're going to have tents for those of you that are flying, believe you me. Uh, we have everything ready. Everything's going to be ready. And boy, 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 you know, it's a feast day, isn't it? Feast? Woo, boy, we're going to be feasting. Some of you people are going to actually eat organic, homegrown chicken. A cow beef that we raised and butchered here on our land. Deer. More likely, Elder Doug is the one who hunted and shot that deer process. Hey, and then vegetables and, and, and stuff that the sort of homemade bread and rolls. And whoo, boy, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Won't be no margarine on the table. It's going to be some butter. And, and watch this. Maybe we even have some good goat milk coming right from our own goats here on this land. Woo! Oh, don't get me started. And Sister Ashley and Diane. Diane makes this homemade granola. Oh! Oh! Ah! Ah, I'm hungry, honey. Man, I'm getting hungry. Ah! No, she. I mean, she's coming up. She's going to have a thing full of stuff. No, more likely I have a place for her. She don't have to y'all know now. Sister Selena. Y'all coming up here, no, nah, you ain't got to sleep in no tent. I might put y'all in a motel room or something like that, but you ain't sleeping in no tent. Not y'all, because yeah, it's your first time coming up here. Hallelujah. Now, Brent, we'll put him with the brothers. Hallelujah. We'll take care of everything once y'all get here. Don't worry about it. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. But, man, I'm telling you, who boy, I'm starting to, man. Ha! Ah. Oh, boy, bro, bro, Mike said they're getting three gallons a day as far as the cow milk and stuff, and they're going to start popping out some butter for Passover. They're going to bring some butter up. Yeah, you know, raw milk is only for pet consumption only. Wink, wink, wink. And <laughs> <laughs> it off the chain, though. Now we're terrorists in our own country, but we want to raise our own food. <laughs> What kind of deranged satanic mindsets these people are operating in? Whew, Lord have mercy. Call number 218. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the straightway truth. I may help you. Uh, you mean 21? Hello? Yeah, Pastor Dow Mitchell. Hey, Brother Mitchell, how you doing? Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, man, I'm sitting at uh, Brother Josh Gorman and his Sister Gorman House. And, you know, we're saying to ourselves, everything we talk about tonight, you you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know, I got to call in now. Uh, so, now, I mean, I, I just got here earlier, about one third of the day, and we've been talking about deliverance. We've been talking about spiritual gifts. We've been talking about, uh, I mean, you just mentioned Sister Dan with the grain, and she was just uh, Candace right here was just about to say grain. That's Sister Dan. She got some her. I mean, we're talking about superfoods and everything else. I tell you what, just like you tell my brother and my sister that I appreciate their offering. That's the first time that since in being, you know, being in the ministry right here like this, I actually had somebody actually send me a quarter ounce of gold. Yeah. I, I spoke to him. I remember we talked yesterday. And I, I talked one of the first things I told him when I got here. Good. Good. I appreciate it. So, yeah, we, uh, I appreciate the gold, appreciate the uh, silver, appreciate the Federal Reserve notes. We were talking about uh, coming up there for Passover when I got here and we were talking about it. We were talking about sleeping in tents and 
shoot, sure enough, you just spoke about it. So it's like, man, every time we say something, it's like you saying it. So <laughs> we, we up here to laughing. Yeah, I've been buying cots too, man, because the cots are pretty comfortable too. You know, we got a lot of people, but like I said, brother, we have a lot of people that are coming. I mean, that's going to probably, there's going to be a lot of people coming up here. And I'm going to have, I'm going to go down there to town. I'm going to reserve about, I don't know, maybe eight, ten rooms or something like that. I'm going to reserve some rooms, too. Well, you probably don't have to worry about that. We just bring tents. We just like, whatever, we just going to be on land. So, I mean, that's pretty much what we're going to do. Glad to be on the land, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I we, mean, why, why, why have to get and drive every morning? We're just going to be there. You know, I understand. Whatever. That's how it looks good. Well, I'll be right, probably be your next door neighbor, brother. Because Sister Carol, she ain't sleeping in no ten till feast day. <laughs> yeah, like that won't be nothing new. It'll be just like the cops all over again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But ain't no thing. But yeah, I had a safe trip up here, man. I'm enjoying my time with them and uh we're gonna pick up a brother uh brother Dale, uh in Dallas for work. They don't have a vehicle, but I'm gonna pick him up in the morning, me and Brother Josh, and we're gonna bring him here. So we're gonna be here together. So Watching the sermon. Man, I'm glad you're down there with my Israelite brother and sister and their little children, brother. I'm glad that all y'all Israelites are down there fellowshipping, brother. This is what it's all about. And ain't they beautiful people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, I mean, we went out, had, had dinner before, uh, before sundown, and we got here and started listening to the uh, broadcast. And, and I'm enjoying myself, you know. And right now we're just talking about uh, deliverance. And, you know, we just we just talk about spiritual things, you know, things that we trying to, understand and get more of a grasp on so well i tell you what come on what the world calls saturday night we know it to be first day of the week but i tell you what mm -hmm. tell everybody to get ready for for mass deliverance comes come on uh first day of the week or roman saturday night tell them to get ready <laughs> and they ain't got nothing to be fearful of we still alive oh no i didn't talk about so i need to be first in line so i yeah, well, how happy it go down? I've never been part of one, but we're going to handle it. Oh, believe you me. It's going to be something else, ain't it, honey? Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but don't worry. The people will leave with a clear conscience, clear as mine. All these thoughts that people get harassed, Tim driven, and told me about, they go away. Some people even get healed of sickness or other diseases. I mean, it's a wonderful yeah. thing. Well, we need to understand. We need more understanding. So we, uh, you know, I think. Uh, I mean, well, I can speak for myself. I've been enjoying the whole uh, spiritual warfare kill because I sure been kind of uh, going through that. And I mean, I've had just certain thoughts throughout the week, and I, I even send certain text messages and certain things and whatnot. And you know, I get responses from them, and you know, I just I, I become a deep thought, you know, throughout the week, you know, about it, over it, you know, from just listening to some of the sermons and whatnot, and. Uh, <laughs> Get up the website and whatnot, and just read my word. You know, it's kind of like, man, you know, it's, it's kind of you read it over and over, but you can't comprehend it just yet. So that's why I said, you know, we really got to make it up the Passover, man. We got to be part of the deliverance for real. Hallelujah. So, yeah. Well, so, if, yeah, if, I want to hey, and let you know. So, hey, if y'all can, you know, we definitely welcome because we love y'all. Hey, like I said, we, we, we cool. We just go. Probably what we go ahead and do do uh, end up doing going just rent a big old van we just all gonna call in and, and ride out there man we just all gonna come together so i will and, tell uh, you yeah, we just, we, i will tell you I, I said i will tell you that is the easiest way to do it from all y'all coming from that area is just to rent a van brother and then y'all can um put two or three drivers on the van and then y'all can head on up and it'll be a whole lot easier the best thing to do is get yeah. a get a 15 pastor van so you have plenty of room to stretch out and the children can have plenty of room to, to sleep yeah, yeah, and that's, that's what we're thinking about because we got, uh, you know, probably for sure it's going to be about two or three brethren, so uh, that should be enough space. But, I mean, the more we sit here talking about all these, uh, you know, speaking on the word, we sit here in this living room, the more we speak on it, the more we, we keep saying, man, you know, we, we definitely got to make that trip. So, you know, you plan on uh, seeing us, man. We're just trying to piece it together right now on how we're going to do this. Us come up from Houston up to here, get them, and then keep it moving. Well, if y'all get up here, if y'all get the time off, y'all come up here, and then y'all can just leave sometime first day morning, brother, so it won't put y'all out track, you know, for job too long. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, what I'm thinking is, I told them we probably take off from Houston probably like Thursday, shoot up, 
to downstairs uh, that night. And we, we even keep it moving like that. I wake up early. That Friday just keep just keep going. You know, it don't matter. But for sure, we probably leave like maybe that late Sunday night or something like that, or with the world call Sunday night. Uh, we call it Monday more Monday so or, or second day. Gotcha. And uh, shoot back and shoot back. So. You know, we, we plan it out. We're putting our lives together. We're we coming up. We're going to call it something. All right. Well, y'all. Yeah, well, uh, y'all have a good, good uh, Shabbat, and uh, uh, we'll be talking to y'all soon. All right. Bless you, Brother Mitchell. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, Brother Mitchell, Brother Greg, they're down there in Houston, Texas. They're up there visiting the family in Dallas there. Uh, Brother Josh, such a Candace Gorman, who are two Israelites. In whom there is no guile. Hey! Boy, it's beautiful. Brothers and sisters in the most high yacht. Beautiful family. Love them, love them, love them. Caller number 813, Pastor Dow. You on Straightway Truth? How may I help you? 813, huh? Yeah. I believe that's old Jay Snip. <clears throat> hey, how you feeling, man? I'm uh, better. I may not sound a lot better, but I'm definitely feeling a lot better. Especially. After the silver interview from King World News. Oh, let's hear it. That I just wasn't doing. What you got? Well, you remember back, I guess it was early last year, was it? Or was it 2010? I can't even remember. I think it might have even been 2010 when Andrew McGuire, London Metals trader, blew the whistle on J.P. Morgan for, blood, for manipulating silver. Yep, yep. Called the CFTC both times in advance, told them, Specific days and exact down to the second, minute and second, when they would do it. And then the CFTC finally had to get off their feet and start investigating. And as we know, they're still looking at that. And they haven't come out with any any, any uh, disclosure yet as to what they found. And we've got some new rules coming out in the play in the CFTC. So without even worrying about that, <coughs> Andrew McGuire, the guy that gave that testimony, who called the CFTC, just did an interview, I don't know if, I guess it was today, about a 25, 30-minute interview, kingworldnews.com, you'll see at the top, Andrew McGuire interview, click on it, click on it again, it takes you to the, to the sound file. As a matter of fact, I emailed it to you. But, uh, thank you. I don't, I don't even think I can repeat what everything he covered, the way he covered it. So everyone who needs to know what about this needs to go hear that. But he said, the long story short of that, he said, do you, do you remember when we heard about this Chinese or Asian uh, market coming out for, yeah. for metals? Yeah. That was going to compete with the COMEX and the LBMA, and it kind of didn't turn into anything. Kind of fizzled. And he said, yeah, I, I remember that. And he said, and the reason it fizzled, because there was no volume happening at that exchange. And he said, basically, as soon as they announced it, some big players got the Chinese out of New York pretty quick and pretty much so the ones that fizzled it. And uh, that was the end of it. So he said what they've done very recently, or not necessarily very recently, but behind the scenes recently, is to create another uh, market. I think he said they were, they were calling it PAGE, P-A-G-E, Pan Asian something. I don't know what it stands for. And it's going to be a completely all physical gold and silver market. He explained it from the top to the bottom how it's going to work, how it is going to ultimately lead to the destruction of the LBMA and COMEX. He said they'll end up defaulting, but they're going to do what they've been doing in Greece right now. They're not going to call it default the default. But nonetheless, the COMEX is going to go down. When the volume starts to leave the COMEX in, these, in the other BMA, it's basically the same thing, it's going to flood over there to this new exchange. He says, I cannot tell you how soon it's going to start uh, because there's there's two more little pieces they're putting together that, that are just about done. Um, but he's leaning on the word soon, I guess I could say, uh, from what I gathered. And when this thing kicks in, and people start to catch on how it works, why it's 100% covered. There's no paper backing. Uh, it was just phenomenal to listen to the, the, the beginning to end of how this thing is going to work and how the bankers are going to be left with their tails behind their legs when this thing kicks in gear. So 
while the rest of us are looking at the CFTC and the regulators, hey guys, can you please regulate with your nice hundred, two hundred thousand dollar a year salaries and uh, that I'm paying for, and you're supposed to be protecting people like me from manipulation, and you keep looking the other way, and now they're saying, oh, we're going to come out, you know, with the new uh, position limit rules from the from the CFTC, and that ought to fix things, and we are, and I've been saying this whole time, it's not because they haven't even talked about the second rule kicking in until after 2013. <laughs> Excuse me. And even if it does, all JP Morgan's done recently is instead of being the number one short position, they're going to give it to their banker friends. There's now there's four of them instead of one of them. So they can all get together and do the same thing, and they can all stand there and say, hey, I'm not past the position limits. I've got the exact amount of positions I'm allowed to have. So will HSBC or whatever bank, number one, bank number two, bank number three, and bank number four, and then they'll all just short together. And then there's nothing anyone's going to be able to do, even with those rules in place. That's what I was just saying in my last video. So here this guy comes out today talking about it. The donut, who cares? Don't worry about the CFTC. Don't worry about the Security Exchange Commission. Don't worry about the comments. Don't worry about any of that stuff. <laughs> yep. He covered how they, you know, they pulled their little raid on Wednesday. Perfectly timed. You know, it was complete, complete. Inside job again, you know, where they smash the markets, but even so, gold and silver are still holding up quite well. I mean, here it is Friday. I know gold was down 76 or so cents at the end of the day here, or silver, and we're still at $34, $35 silver, you know, in the same week. Yeah. After, after the huge raid. <laughs> yeah, after all that volatility. So, and that's, that's what's their rules and their system. So this guy's saying, man, you know, basically he's laughing at him like, that's like, oh, that's like old technology. Basically how this is how this is going to end up looking. That's old school. That's like, you know, ancient history. Sure, it still is in existence. And, and uh, he basically was saying, well, how is this going to, you know, they're the ones that set the price still and how is this going to affect that? And, and uh, you, I mean, everyone listening, and we'll just have to go listen to that kingworldnews.com. Uh, audio. It's, uh, it's an MP3. It's right on the website. Uh, he does all of his interviews. He has Jim Sinclair on, I think, yesterday or the day before. Mm. And this is brand new. And this is the guy. You know, this isn't Jim Sinclair. This isn't Bob Chapman or or, or just you know or uh, Ted Butler or somebody. Which these are all good guys. Good, great information. But this is a guy that no one really knew about in 2010. That actually caused some massive commotion behind the scenes that we could not even fathom. By blowing the whistle on specifically J.P. Morgan traders, they had to shut down their trading division. They lost 10 traders. I guess let them go, fired them, whatever they had to do. They closed down the trading operation in London. And, and then this whole thing happened with the CFTC. We're going to put these position limit rules right. So this guy by himself, single-handedly, did some massive things here for us that we don't even really recognize or appreciate that much, much as we probably should as silver bugs that we are. And here he is giving the interview saying, oh, hey, by the way, that, that Asian thing fizzled, fizzled because the bankers got them almost immediately. We've started our own thing that's outside of their reach. It's going to be international in scope. We've already got this set up. We've got the exchange set up. We've got the, the custodian or the place that will be holding the bullion, the, you know, in, the, in our own private secure vault. That's already secured. You've got all this stuff ready. So this thing is going to be unleashed. Sometime in the near future, I don't know what that means. Is that, you know, months and months and months from now, a week? I, I have no idea. He wouldn't even hint. So no one knows. But all I can tell you and the other people who have been listening to us and, you, you know, you uh, about getting silver, why you should get silver, and stop listening to people like, you know, my guy always talk about Bozo Beast and people like him. Ah, <laughs> uh, it doesn't belong there. Silver doesn't belong with these prices. Gold doesn't belong with these prices either. It's got to come back down. It's a bubble. And here I am talking about fundamentals. And this goes right in line with fundamentals. People are about to find out what fundamentals mean in an unrigged, uncontrollable market. And when he, what he basically said, one of the things that he said was that when you see this thing taking over, Naturally, it will take over. There's nothing they're going to be able to do to stop it. They can't intervene in it. It's going to make the prices go where they belong, and it's going to cause some massive action because people are going to recognize what this thing just did, and then a lot of people are going to want in on it. 
So you're going to have a flood of that action kicking in, and you're going to see what he said is prices of gold and silver that are just going to blow your mind. Did he mention any? That it will be possible. Did he mention anything about Eric Sprott being in on this too? No, he did not. Hmm. Did not mention Eric Sprott. But uh, man, this is good a lot news. Of people have been in contact with him to secure, uh, like corporate and commercial type of uh, help getting bullion and, and and getting companies and pension funds and things to invest in their bullion products. <laughs> and they've been contacting this guy, Andrew McGuire, after he'd been on with King World News back in like first time in 2010 and then again in I think July of 2011. And that's been a while since he's been on, and here he comes out of nowhere with this bombshell information about a, a true market, real market, gold and silver exchange. And it's not just going to be a matter of like calling, you know, AppMax or Gainesville no Coins for people to purchase. It's not. It's, it's going to be an actual bullion exchange, and there's going to be ways for big corporations, big hedge funds, et cetera, to get in on that and to utilize it. Do you know what and this that's is setting up? Drive the massive volume into this new thing, and it is going to suck the volume right out of the comics. The only people who will be standing left in the comics are most of what's already there now, which is the big banks and then the people or the sheeple that they keep pulling back in and then shorting and destroying them, and then they pull them back in and short and destroy these little guys left and right over and over again. So that's going to just go away. It's just going to be like an empty, you know, it's going to vacuum out. And they're going to be sucked into this new thing, which is they're not going to have any control over whatsoever because there's no paper product. There's no leverage. There's no such thing as leverage like we have now where you can go get a futures contract. And like I give an example, a, a standard size paper contract for silver is 5,000 ounces. But they let you play with it as if you own all of it for 10% of that. <laughs> so you only need to come up with 10% of the money to play with 100% of the whole thing, and if it moves a dollar, it was as if your whole 5,000 ounces moved the dollar and you get to reap the profit. So that's why all these people get suckered into this paper market. But none of that exists in this new market. There's no such thing as leverage. There's no such thing as a paper contract that doesn't even exist. Boy, you know so, what that's going to happen? I can tell you exactly what that's going to happen. That's going to cause... A lot of these people, like Eric Sprott was talking the other day, for everybody to run into tangible assets, drying up, therefore, the, the so-called perceived value of the paper market. And when they do that, that means everything is going to be, instead of being priced against paper, everything is going to be priced against the actual physical asset itself. That's exactly what he said. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what he said. Beautiful. Same words, basically, that you just said. That's one of the things he mentioned. It, that it's the real physical good, basically for the first time in God you know, knows how long since the freaking markets ever were created, that the real tangible asset is going to really set the price and not some piece of paper that was leveraged that doesn't even exist, you know, that, that, that or not necessarily the paper doesn't exist, but the asset that it claims to represent doesn't exist. All that will go away. And he was using the example that he gave back Back when he went to the hearing uh, about the CFTC to blow the whistle, they had a hearing after that, and uh, it was televised. It was on, I believe it was on C-SPAN, may have been on C-SPAN, and all of a sudden the feed goes, gets cut. When this guy goes to talk, this one, I can't remember the guy's name, goes to talk to reveal the, same, the, the information that this Andrew McGuire had, the feed gets cut. For the entire time, he had to talk for five minutes, and then as soon as he's done talking, the feed comes back on. I didn't want anyone hearing what he had to say. One of the things, and this came out of one of the guys, uh, I believe he may have been from the CFTC, who verified that the leverage, in other words, not necessarily the leverage, but the number of contracts uh, versus real asset that is supposed to be underlying that contract is 100 to 1. So that would be like having 100 ounces of silver or pieces of paper that says each of those pieces of paper represent one ounce of silver. And there's a hundred of these pieces of paper to a hundred different people. So they all think if I go turn this paper and I've got a silver ounce with my name on it, there's actually one. <laughs> there's one silver ounce. And that was the number she used. And he said this, when they came, he said that, and he even said in the interview, he said when this, I don't know when, and he gave the guy's name, I forget now. Um, 
when he mentioned that it was 100 to 1, he verified what we've been saying. And it wasn't just conspiracy theory anymore. It, it just kind of verified it. So now we know these ex just paper exchange operates on the 100 to 1 nonsense that it doesn't even exist, but that's what sets the price. So in, in reality, if this was really true, prices are off by 100 to 1. Wow. So I mean, you can really say that. Brother, 100 to 1. You know, we're getting ready to look at, we're getting ready to look at a bunch of people who are in paper. They're going to wake up one morning and be dead broke. And those of us who done the, what we know to be the smart thing, which is invest in tangible assets, we're, gonna, we're getting ready to watch the greatest transfer of wealth, brothers, getting ready to take place in the history of mankind. Oh, yeah. So it's already happened in the space of wealth, and people just have a grasp that it's, that's actually taking place. They're feeling a little bit of trickle, like a little trickle down effect, you know, the after effect. Uh, you know, it's like, like the nuclear bombs already gone off, and now everyone's standing outside their houses are gone. And For the fallout. Few people left. You know, we are going to actually make sense of what just took place. The rest of us will be stepping out of the bunker. Hey, we're fine. We look around the right else, they're going to be like, why didn't I get the bunker? Oh, I, tr I tried to tell you. you know, why didn't I get the silver and gold? I tried to tell you. And all these times, all these times, we keep this like Donald Trump said, big, massive raid on silver. Man. I, I, should, I should call them and thank them. Hey, I appreciate that because I just got my IRS income tax back like today, just cleared today. So I appreciate y'all knocking the price down a few dollars because I'm fixing to go buy some more. I appreciate that, thank you for me. <laughs> when the new exchange kicks in, and I've already got my silver stock that I've been collecting all these years, then I can finally appreciate the price bill where it's going to go. And he, okay, he reiterated about how you just, you're not going to believe when this thing is let loose. Where, where, you know, it's like lifting up that horse or, or whatever that's been chained up. And you ain't let them run as fast as you need to go because it's been controlled and manipulated. Now you finally let them loose. Get out of the little, you know, 10 foot by 10 foot enclosure. Go out in this, you know, five hundred dollars, hundred sixty acre field over here. Which is what the, that sucker could do. And then he just blows the gold off of, you know, everything around there. It's the same thing that's going to happen to gold and silver. It's going to, and because it's been held back for so long, it, it had that opportunity to just explode before finally coming to some kind of sane price. And the sane price, by the way, would probably be sick. So well, I had to call you to tell you this. Man, you I'm so yeah. glad you called to tell me that because, man, I'm definitely going to go listen to that interview as soon as the show of I'm going to listen to it. But I tell you what, brother, I mean, you know, hey, Man, this is going to be nice. It's going to be nice because you know just what as I do. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when it's going to take place and when it happens because it is just the truth. Man, we're getting ready. It is unbelievable what we're getting ready to experience and see. Oh, yeah. It, you know, we're just an early off here in 20, you know, 2012 and look at all this stuff that's already, already happened. You got this guy, Black, Black Bar or whatever, I don't know you ever pronounce his name. Releasing, you know, this massive bomb, getting ready to release a massive bombshell video about Obama hanging out with these, you know, what, what, what were terrorists back in the 60s and 70s. And he says, I'm going to release it on March 1st. The sucker dies basically on the day it's supposed to happen. And now they're going to try to get the video. It's going to be a couple of weeks before they release it. Now that the guy's dead, he died of, you know, natural causes. At 43 years old, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people right. seem to be dying of natural causes later. But, you know, the thing about this is is that every piece of paper that is out there in in, in the world, it, all over the place, that is in print, that is circulating out there, you know, in order to balance these sheets, in order to get everything back in, in, in into kilt, if I can use that term, that means that whatever the value of the paper that they have out there in each denomination of these countries and stuff, it has to, the physical assets has to match that. Yeah, normally that's how that works. And back when people, was, you know, people's countries, all of ours, were on the gold standard one point or another, that was the asset. There was only so much gold in so much of your currency that you printed. You could compare the two of them and say, well, this is what our currency is worth. Uh, based off of that gold, and if we keep printing more currency, then the price of gold is actually going to look like it goes up, and our currency, of course, purchasing power is going to go down. So I naturally, in our own country, we were like one of the last of the Mohicans here to get off the gold standard, too, in 1971. Well, we had a ferocious appetite as a country that was just expanding and expanding and could not be paid for any other way unless we got the world to pay for it. So we made the deal with OPEC. 
We sell the oil for U.S. dollars, nothing but U.S. dollars, and everyone will be happy. What well, allowed us to create these trillions of dollars that the world needed just to do business, which allowed us to basically ride the coattails, and that's ending right now. So it's going to be brutal when that you know, petro dollar goes away, and it's already going away. It's just not fully away yet. Man, I got a physical number in my head for silver, but I'm not going to put it out there, man, because, I mean, it, it, it's staggering what I got running around in my head. And gold, I don't even uh, want to I don't even want to mention what I think gold would, would have to be valued at right now, considering all the money that has been printed, the amount of debt that we have worldwide, especially in the United States of America, being that the dollar is allegedly, supposedly, so-called the world's reserve currency. These, these people in the fiat money game, they in trouble. Just like history says. And it's just history repeating, except now that we've been all, you know, the modern Roman Empire, we're all advanced and we're all technological and now we can print our own money. The Roman Empire couldn't print its own money. It's still got to use gold and silver. It's have to water it down, basically, with other metals. But now it's America. Man, we've got a printing press. So when that sucker goes, you know, and, even, and also, you know, with the Roman Empire, don't, you know, it didn't conquer the whole world when the whole Roman Empire was out extending in its heyday. It, it conquered the surrounding areas of where it originated from. Yep. A good amount of them. But... America's got bases in every damn, you know, practically every damn country, every part of the world. We basically expanded. We have the whole world using our currency for, for you know, since 1971, basically. Yeah. Uh, or in the 70s, at least. So we've actually, you know, then when this, when this Roman Empire goes down, I can't even find You know, my worst thoughts are probably going to be childish. Yeah. So how it could go down if you are not sitting on gold and silver, to weather through whatever the hell happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only reason I tell people to get it. I'm not here to try to give somebody some stock advice and how to make tons of money. If I was, I wouldn't even waste my time telling them. I'd do it myself. Yeah. Well, I got to make money to other people. I'm not getting paid for this. So I'm just um, you know, just like you do, same reason, just trying to let people know why you got to have gold and silver. Not to make it rich, but I came to figure out pretty quickly that, oh, my God, you might be I'm sitting on a small fortune with just a small few thousand dollar investment right now when the time comes. And then use that to buy a physical asset, a nice piece of land, property, or something. You know, people are, those people who are preparing are going to be the ones selling off all the stuff that they use their fiat currency when they have their big high-paying jobs and everything else. <laughs> and then everyone else who has the money, which at that time will be those who have the gold silver, is going to be saying, around, hey, I'll buy that from you. Hey, I'll buy that from you, too. Love and life. Bro, Joe. And, and I'm not here to, to make some love life. I'm here to just help people, but you're going to have love and life. Bro, Joe, I sure do appreciate you calling in and giving us that, that, that bomb, brother, because I'm definitely going to go check it out, man. Man, thank you for calling in, brother. No problem. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go back here and cough myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should be looking for that box. It should be there in a day or so. Okay, yeah, I'll look at that. The ones that are going to be here then, I you know, definitely want to get on that stuff. I appreciate you sending it. Yes, sir. No problem. Hey, Brother Joe, thank you, man. Everybody in here, they're fond of you, man. Everybody, Jay Snip boy in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I appreciate everybody too. It was nice talking to you. Get a family love, brother. Thank you for that info. I appreciate it, brother. Have a good good evening. Thank you. Take care. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you what, brothers and sisters. Man, I'm going to go listen to that. A lot of people don't know who Andrew McGuire was or who he is and stuff. Do you know he actually had his car uh, mysteriously ran into after he gave that report uh, up there? And of course, I mean, he caused a bombshell and stuff. And of course, you know, hey. Um, okay, Watchmen got the SEI yesterday, Carol. Um, wonderful. But I tell you what, brothers and sisters, with the amount of assets that all of us Israelites have to get, can you imagine what kind of assets we'd have uh, if we combine those assets once silver goes to the moon? Can you imagine what we could do as a as a as a Israelite heritage community for the saints of the most high? Man, we're going to have three or four communities. And then 
have a community in a warm area where they can grow food, and then we can have our own trucks on the road and, and supply our own goods. In another area, we can raise cows or cattle and do food and beef and just send it back and forth between the community. Man, oh, man, it, it's endless. No telling what the Most High Yah would do for us. That's why I often go back to Genesis. I spent a lot of time in Genesis lately and learn better sheep the wisdom of how our people did it a long, 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 long time ago to use that wisdom and to use that knowledge. Whew. I tell you what, for me, I think it'd be nice, boy, if I could have all the Israelites on one big old gigantic piece of land or at least two, three communities where we can fellowship with each other and all of us, all the people can get out of that world and Silv can go to such a high, high range and stuff like that, man, we could help saints or the most high actually get out of debt, man. And uh, man, I tell you, it'd be something beautiful. It really, truly will. Hallelujah. Well, we'll see. But anyway, I'm going to leave off with that right there. Kind of even extended and made it up against the time though. Hey, I bless each and every last one of you, sweet princes and strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our Lord and Savior and our soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Every single one of you, you be blessed and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. The King, and I said the King is coming.